you could tell that they do understand you. They do understand, yeah. but they just don't want to have the conversation because it's not convenient to whatever whatever journey they're setting up to, to experience. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, there's no benefit to their agenda I, I respect, or narrative. I respect I respect how they want to guard their their little bubble. They want to they want to protect their bubble. They don't want nobody penetrating it and bursting it and coming into it and sharing that space with them for whatever reason. Maybe the pain that they feel it hasn't matured to a point where they know that they could just relax and contemplate things outside of what's comfortable to them. They just want to stay talking about the same gods, talking about the same, you know, uh, aspects of the culture, talking about, you know, the same things. And to me, it just gets boring. You know what I'm saying? It just gets to, you get to a point where you, it doesn't stimulate you and it doesn't inspire you anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that's what people misunderstand. That That's an amazing broad answer that whoever doesn't understand you after this. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. And you know what? We can never please everyone. That is the truth about that. We could try, try. We can never, you know, while you giving, while you giving a hug to someone, the other one is getting bothered because you're not hugging them. Like it's crazy. Like it's, it's, the show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Flash Talks history worth listening to tonight we have a special brother that i was so inspired by in the early 90s he's one of my brothers that i got down with with his crew as well i know his family all that good stuff until this day that's my little brother right there ladies and gentlemen joshua joe ortiz aka incredible josh aka sunzai is a professional b-boy dancer acrobat Hip hop producer, artist, and teacher from the Bronx, New York. Growing up in an environment filled with drugs and violence, Josh mind stretched far beyond these proclaimed limitations, and he became to train the craft of b-boying breakdance. His early influences were his uncles, who founded the infamous b-boy crew called Incredible Breakers, along with the musical artists and movie stars as such as Bruce Lee and The RZA. Joshua pursued a career in the entertainment industry after years of practicing his art on the streets of New York. In 2001, he moved to Orlando, Florida for work and other reasons like wanting to escape the darkness he had experienced for so many years. He also always carried his grandmother's advice with him, which was never give up on what you love to do. His hardworking attitude and perseverance opened up many doors in the entertainment industry, and Josh soon created a name for himself among choreographers, directors, casting directors, and producers across America, extending throughout their entire world. Joshua's movies and live performance credits include like Janet Jackson, Rock With You World Tour, Step Up 3, Step Up 4, Battle of the Year 3D, B-Girl the Movie, Macy's Passport, Jennifer Lopez, Carnival Cruise Lines, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, The Ellen Show, and many more. He also won several dance competitions, both underground and commercial, commercials such as KOD Volume 8 in China. And that was actually first place, Shadow Wars 7 in Australia, which was sponsored by Red Bull. Um, he got second place there. Battle Nights 4, he got first place there. Joshua has also performed his own act along with two other Cirque du Soleil B-Boys in the classic show La Nuba in Walt Disney World's Disney Springs, Orlando, Florida. 
It's the first time b-boys are granted the opportunity to perform their own act in circus history. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Josh, a.k.a. Incredible Josh. that intro that was fire well first of all this is josh incredible josh one of my brothers since forever um i want to introduce him because this guy's been in my life since the beginning of my hip-hop career and that's incredible josh incredible breakers from the bronx new york 196 kingsbridge my man used to throw it down and uh, he's worldly known worldly known one of the first b-boys to perform in Cirque du Soleil. So, incredible Josh was good. Oh, I appreciate the shout, my brother. Worldly. I wish I had a better intro, like a whole, cause there's so much. I'll, I will have to spend like three books of like the shit you've done because your resume is ridiculous. So I, I actually was looking at your bio and I'm like, God damn, I'm gonna spend like two hours saying his bio. Which, so, oh yeah. Which one? Yeah. I got a Yo, I saw a few of them. I just went online. You know, everything you put on the internet, it stays in the internet. So, that's true. 
That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what's going on, my brother? Everything good? Chilling, man, chilling. Yeah, brother. You said, you know, um, you said a few things the other day. We were kind of talking and we briefly touched up on it, but there's a few topics, actually, a few topics that I feel like that are very important. People are not really speaking on anymore. You know what I'm saying? We're going to start with the first question and just look at the screen, my brother. Boom. What got you into the hip hop culture? Ooh, That's the first okay. question. So go ahead, brother. Yo, honestly, what got me into the hip hop culture is synonymous with like the question of what got me into this world. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. You got I born into this. Into it. Yeah. So that's that's really like you you're usually a product of your environment, or your product or your environment is gonna be a product of you. You know what I mean? So uh, now, when you say you you were born into it, like for the audience out there, the world audience, because I believe it's gonna be global this interview. So and people gonna see it all over the world. So. For those that don't know, when you say you were born into it, what does that mean? Well, I was like, I was basically born and raised in the Bronx, my physical vessel. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Um, so you know, I came into the, I came into the world, already seeing it. It was all around me. Um, I think it was probably the height of it too. You know, because I was born in '82, so that's when breaking was really, really at its you know, at its pinnacle for the most part, as far as I feel like anyways, with the essence of, of the moves and, and, and just the character and the originality, like everybody was original, you know what I'm saying? Um, same oh, thing with MCs and the graph artists, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was, it was like originality was like, you still get some of that. Now you still get some B-boys and, and some MCs where they're like, you know, being original is important to them. But back then, I guess maybe also cause it was, it was fresh. It was, it was new. Everybody was basically like originality so important. And that's one thing that got instilled in me from the jump, you know what I'm saying? And my, my influence and the reason why I actually started doing it was because like I said, a, I was around it. I was born into it. Um, and B I saw my family, you know, getting down. My uncles were incredible, literally. So I would always watch them and try to mimic what they were doing. And my mom's was rocking and my dad was dancing to hustle, you know, dance and music has always been huge, you know, in, in the hip hop community, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's the Atlanta hip hop community, whether it's the Chicago or the LA hip hop community, you know, even stemming from like the robot and, you know, Boogaloo style, which my moms used to also emulate and try to do that back in like the seventies. So it, it it's, it's like a gradual progress you know what I'm saying? With, with just inner city kids. And that's, that's usually how dances anyways, same thing now, you know, you got different dances now, but it's, it just continues with the youth. You know what I'm saying? It continues with the kids that are being brought up with less than nothing. And that's the outlet. You know what I'm saying? So we did it for different reasons. You know what I mean? Okay. So now you were born 1982. Let's fast forward. Let's say two years, 1984. Now that's the height of I'm gonna assume like I was I'm a little older than you so I was like probably like nine or ten so I could kind of remember 1984, but being that you're two years old, you're already into your family's hip hop life because it's incredible. Breakers like one of the most iconic crews in the entire world that they're gonna live off for history. Like you go 60 years from now when you mention. Back in the days, when you say back in the days in the 80s or maybe late 70s, I don't know that history. It will probably be your uncles that I will talk to. But it's 1984. You're two years old. 1983, you're three. 1984, you keep going. Now you're four no, years old. Let's say. I don't 19... mean to interrupt you, but the, the hip hop didn't even exist yet. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't. Nice. Okay. The, the beautiful thing about, about how this culture really flourished was that it was almost like a, 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 it was like, like a, like a meal, you know what I'm saying? Like it had its ingredients, but it was pulled from everywhere. You know what I mean? It was like, you got, you had artists in the street, you have graph artists, people that were drawn on the walls. I mean, that's ancient, you know what I'm saying? You go back to Kemet, people been drawn on the walls, telling stories for, for tens of thousands of years. So that was already, you know, that's just lineage, you know what I'm saying? So 
on top of that, then you had dancers, you had people who were, you know, being inspired by people like James Brown and, and, you know, just different artists, singers and, and, and performers that would bust these really super cool radical moves. And a lot of the street kids being that it wasn't much else to do because everything was so abandoned and people were burning down buildings and there was just a lot of poverty that they just channeled that energy and they just, they took it like a game. Like it was something that they can do with their time and, and something constructive and positive that they can put energy into as opposed to what they were doing previous to that, which was, you know, gangs and, and fights and, and killings and things like that, which is implemented through higher powers and people who had a specific type of plan. This goes back. I mean, like I said, man, tens of thousands of years where you, you, you haven't, different energies battling one another out, you know, battling each other. And, and, and I, I guess that energy got put into the dance, you know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously the energy of racism versus people who are of color, you know, that is a reality, unfortunate, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately. So that's the reason why I think all of those elements were beginning to come together and people would basically just come to these parties and there would be all different types of people for different types of what they call now elements that you'd see at these jams, you know what I'm saying? Most of these jams were thrown out in the street, you know what I mean? They were, they were block parties, you know what I mean? Now, were, now, now, let me stop you right there before, yeah. because I know there's so much into this. It's like you can never really, like, explain, like, the generalized life of the 80s and 90s. Like, it's, it's so difficult to, like, explain it to somebody that never lived it. Now, you're generalizing in how it used to be, but I want to know more about like you at four years old. Like mm. I understand that you're mentioning like what was going on in the streets yeah, and things that happened. But, I, but I wanna I wanna hear more of your experience of you being four years old. Right. What are you what are you listening to? What are you hearing? Like, so which brings me mm -hmm. to the second question. Who were and are your greatest guides, teacher, main inspirations, and mentors? That's mainly what, what where we're going there because, like you said, you were born into it, but you've had to see it somewhere. You've had to hear or be involved somewhere. So basically, if you could answer that question, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a that's a good question, bro. Um, and I like how they laid out. You know what I'm saying? Like that's super dope. How you laid them out, and then I'm able to kind of think a little bit more into it. Um, yeah, bro. Like I would have to say like some of my first, um, inspirations and somewhat of, of like mentors, you know what I'm saying? Were, were the monks were like martial artists. Okay. You know, watch, we used to watch a lot of, um, Asian films, Asian, Asian martial art films, you know what I'm saying? Mainly like, you know, either Chinese, uh, boxing or Japanese, um, you know, samurai swordsmanship and, and ninja shit. You know what I'm saying? We used to watch all that. And, um, I don't know. There was just the energy that came with, with the discipline that you saw these like Jackie Chan and the Shaw brothers, you know what I'm saying? Like, and even on top of that, you know, we were, we were aware that there were monks in the Shaolin, you know what I mean? This is, we, you know, this is when kind of like television, when they first create like, um engineered vcrs you know what i'm saying yeah so we we were able to watch tapes from china tapes from you know like i said the old school kung fu movies and in those kung fu movies they were doing some incredible shit so that that honestly i would have to say was probably some of my my first because even my uncles like i i looked up to them a lot you know they were they were um they weren't necessarily mentors because they were just wow they were just you know what I'm saying? They were out there. You know what I mean? So you and didn't even know it was no hip hop culture or anything. This is four years old. Hip thing. Yeah, it was no there's hip hop. No, there's no culture, nothing set in stone. Like these are the elements and these are that. Like is there, none of that. You didn't even know what was going on. You commercialized. You know, it was it was kind of beginning to, you know, break in. And actually before breaking flash dance came out and, you know, they had contests, big breakdance contests and things like that. I remember my uncles going to those contests. My uncles basically would reign supreme in like every club in New York. You know what That's I'm saying? Amazing. So they would go to any club and battle like anybody and everybody. You know what I mean? When they were at their prime. And that was like I said, I was probably like 83. You know what I'm saying? They they really hit their prime, 84. So 
that's when I was able to really, cause I was conscious of what was going on by that time. Like you said, I was three or four, you know? So I was able to really observe what they were doing. And to me, it just looked like, I mean, it was just a dance, you know, they were just dancing. They would throw, they would but throw. What like, were you seeing? What were you seeing? Like, give it the uh, audience kind of like some detail. I like, remember one what time, were you looking at? Yeah. I remember one time, right. We, um, they had a party. It was a party that my uncle Sam, it was his birthday. So I was at my grandmother's house. This was in Burnside, Tremont in the Bronx. And we were over there and he was just talking about how he wanted to throw this party. You know what I mean? So, and I remember sitting next to my mom's while he was talking to her and talking to my uncles. Like he was hype. He was like, yeah, we're going to DJ there. I'm going to have these people come through. You know what I mean? Uh, shout out to people from the fun house back in the days. Those were a lot of the people they used to mingle with. Oh uh, man. The fun house. I've heard of 10, 18, all that. Uh, you know, in the grill, that was like one of their first battles when they did the battles with the floor masters. A lot of people don't know, but they were in that battle and they don't really get mentioned. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. my uncles are very, they're very, um, I don't want to say street, but they, they're very, uh, grounded in, in just realism in a sense, like what was, they were very in tune with what was going on in New York. You know what I'm saying? In well, that era is completely different. So they yeah. live in the seventies and the eighties and that's like the pinnacle of violence and craziness and gangs. And yeah, I could just imagine how they're living that life and, and hanging outside, going there, going to clubs, like yeah, that bro. must be, wow. but taking you back, taking you back to the martial arts of you, your inspirations, watching TV, when I uh, back to the same question, just so you remember, yeah, your guides, your teachers, your your inspirations, like people that were in your life around four or five that that was kind of like preparing you because you probably didn't even know you were gonna like be incredible jobs no, no. and known okay. all over the world. My uncles, you know what I'm saying. First and foremost, like I remember them hanging, you know, posters on the walls of martial artists and also practicing martial arts, teaching me how to tumble, you know what I mean? Like almost like a pupil, you know, in a sense, it was like a, it was like a Shaolin situation, you know, where I had uncles. You're like, a protege. You're the protege. Yeah, of them. Like, okay. You know, and they're like training me, you know what I'm saying? So it was really, it was interesting growing up feeling like, you know, I seen my uncle Chino, he had a lot of, he had a lot of friends. He had a lot of influence. He had a lot of, um, he just had this glow about him. You know what I mean? He had like a positive energy and everybody gravitated to him. So he just, he created this, this, this movement with, with my other uncles. And they called it, at first they called it um, Rockers Revenge because they used to dance with the floor masters, but politics and all that or whatever, they started gigging. They became the New York City Breakers. They kind of didn't really bring my uncles along that journey with them for whatever reason, but my uncles branched off and did their own thing. So they ended up calling themselves Rockers Revenge. But then there was a group back in the days that would sing. Their name was Rockers Revenge. So they said, all right, you know what? We're going to change the name from Rockers Revenge. We're going to change it to Incredible Breakers. And then that's how they became Incredible Breakers. And they have Float, Awesome Paul, Nasty Ness, um, my other uncle, Eddie, Sammy. It was Chino, Brian. It was um, even CSO. You know, people from the Floor Lords every now and again, shout out to the Floor Lords in Boston. They would come out and represent with my uncles. And it was just like this big family. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, and it was like this unstoppable force, man, because they burnt a lot of people. They took out a lot of people, but a lot of people don't want to talk about that because they feel like it'll destroy their credibility. You know what I'm saying? But my uncles never really. So going back to your question, they were the ones that essentially inspired me. Well, they the, were putting posters on the walls. They were yeah, already giving you the signs. Dancing. They were, you know, I mean, they were they were just always joyful. They were always happy to do what they were doing. And I think it was that energy that really made me feel like, yo, there's some hell going on around us right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's wow. We're, we're poor. Like, I don't feel happy. Like, I'm I'm scared all the time as a kid. You know what I mean? Walking down the block and. You know, my dad was at the time he was smoking crack and there was a lot of violence around me. So I felt like they were like this light, you know what I'm saying? Say at the end of the tunnel, whatever you want to call it. But it was it was a light that they were projecting that I was able to see from afar, even as a little kid. Because like I said, going back to my story earlier, my uncle was going to throw a party and he basically told my mom's like, yo, I don't want no kids at this party. 
You know what I mean? This is just straight up adults. Like we're going to get down. We're going to get busy. There's going to be things going on here that we don't want the kids to be around, et cetera, et cetera. So my mom's like, all right, all right. For whatever reason that day, I don't think my mom could, you know, there was nobody that could watch me. So my mom ended up bringing me along. So I went to Burnside and Tremont. It was mad late. It was probably like 11 o'clock at night. They started their parties late. So when I got there, it was, the house was all black, but there was like strobe light. There was lights. Like it was like a club. They turned the apartment into a club. This was an apartment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and that's New York. <laughs> yeah. The second you walk into the apartment, bro, the door opens. You just see my uncle Chino on this like life-size poster, bro. The poster was like a wallpaper. It like, what? Took, yeah, it took over the whole wall and it was my uncle Chino. He was doing a chair freeze. Oh, and, snap. And, and it was a, um, it was a, you know, the old school Lee jeans. Yeah. It was a, it was a campaign for Lee and he, wow. had, he had, burgundy, he had a burgundy Lee, um, jean jacket and a burgundy, uh, and burgundy Lee jeans with some yes. sick ass original shell toe Adidas with the fat burgundy laces on it. That's and so he, official. You no, know, his chair freeze was like mad. Like he was like. Just raw. It was just the illest chair freeze you ever seen, bro. Like his now, back how old were you at that time when you walked in that 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 apartment? By that time, I was like four years old. Oh man! So you they injected old. this in you, bro. <laughs> oh, bro, it was insane, bro. They had the poster on the whole wall, and there was a woman who had her, she had her foot on him, like she was like posing sexy, and she, and she had a high heel on, and she had her toe on him, on his shoulder while he was chair freezing, and it, and it, and at the top it said Lee L E E real big. And the shit was so crazy. It was like. So now your mom took you there to see them perform or to see what was nah, going she, on? She brought me there because she had to help my grandmother cook. Like my, when, whenever they threw a party, you know, they had the drinks, they had everything or whatever, but they also made food, a lot of Spanish food. You know what I mean? My heritage comes from, you know, Boricua, you know, the island of Borican, you know, Puerto Rican heritage. So it was, it was. It was just like this ongoing thing, like every week or every other week, they would just have a, they have a party for, I don't even know, like, you know what I'm saying? Just to have a party, you know what I mean? So my mom's like, you got to stay in the kitchen. I don't want you going to the living room because that's where everybody was. It was a pretty big living room, you know? It was like, everybody was over there. I could hear them. They were like screaming. Yeah. Oh, like, you know what I mean? Just wilding out. So you don't even know what's going on. So you peek, on. you peek. I seen them, I seen them fucking around. Like, you know, when I would go visit every now and again, when they were practicing stuff like that. But to me, it was almost like they were just doing martial arts. Like they were, because they would also train martial arts while they were training breaking. It, that's they, right. So you, so you didn't even say, oh, that's b born, that's breaking. That's no, breaking. It was just dope, sick ass moves. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. you learned how to move your body and you learned how to utilize your body as a tool, like momentum. You know what I'm saying? The waist, using the waist, kicking your leg, like. Like martial artists do now. It's it's normal now. It's regular now. But not a lot now of people. You could work. kind of remember who was in that room if you could kind of remember a little bit i didn't go to the room i was in the kitchen for a minute because my mom was like you can't go over there oh so you couldn't even see it nah so what happened was my uh my aunt she came up to me and she like i don't know my aunt for whatever reason i maybe she used to play with me all crazy and just joke with me or whatever or maybe she just really was like an insecure woman but she said something to me um i think she always used to call me like skinny bones when i was a little kid because i was really thin because we you know I would starve a lot of time, bro. I didn't have any, any meat on my body. You know what I'm saying? I was mad skinny. So yeah, the calories are not like now, right? <laughs> nah, nah, and I'm all <laughs> but she like, um, get out of here, skinny bones. Like, you know what I mean? But she would, but she would say almost like I felt her energy was almost like wicked in a sense. Like, I don't know, I can't explain it. But when you're a kid, you know, when you feel energy, you just feel it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for sure. She would say some shit. So I said something to her, like. I called her like a cow or something. I was a little kid. You know what I'm saying? I just like, <laughs> I threw something back at her or whatever. And she got mad and she told my moms. And that's how I knew that she would talk to me, you know, that it wasn't a joke, that she was actually spewing some weird shit at me. Cause when I called, when I joked with her back, she got mad or whatever, but I was a kid. So, you know, my mom's was like starting to kind of tell me some shit. And I just kind of like ran away from her and I ran away into the living room. Okay, okay. So when, I, so when I went into the living room, I seen mad people in the living room. It was like, I couldn't see. I'm a little kid. All I seen is legs. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Legs dancing and standing around. And some legs were still. So you see a bunch of legs. You just don't I'm even know what's happening. Little kid. I'm like three or four years old. You know what I'm saying? So, but the lights are, the lights are 
going crazy, bro. It's like a disco in there. And they yeah. had a day. It was like cutting shit up. They were spinning. But I seen Damn. some people and I seen somebody like moving on the floor. I was like, what the hell? I thought they were fighting or something. You know what I mean? So I walked towards where the leg, the, this lady, her legs was just like that. Or this dude, I can't remember, whatever. I was a kid, but I walked to the to, to those legs and I looked through the legs. I remember looking through. <laughs> yeah, you're tiny, so you see. Yeah. yeah, I look right through the legs and this dude is spinning, doing mad windmills, mad fast. And I'm like, and he's traveling, but he's traveling out of all places. He's traveling to me. Oh, and wow. And as he's traveling to me, he gets closer and closer and he kicks me. He kicked, he kicked in between. What? He kicked me, yeah. And it was my uncle. It just happened to be my uncle. And wow, that energy, man. Yeah, it like came to me. It was coming closer and closer and closer. And then the dude just kicked me. And I was, I was a kid, so I was like, I got hit pretty hard. But I wasn't really crying. I don't remember crying, but I remember going it to. Really the, shocked you? Yeah, it shocked me. I remember going to the corner and like feeling like, oh man, like I probably shouldn't have been there. You know what I'm saying? Like I did something maybe I shouldn't have done. Like that's I, why your mom didn't want you to go over there. Yeah, well, no, my uncle didn't want me to go. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. in your mind, you kind of said, "That's why." That's why. Yeah, that's why. I, I, well, I didn't think of it at that moment. I, I now I can re now I can realize it. You know, like, oh, okay, maybe that's why. But when I was a kid, you I, know, Chino at that time, yeah. kicking you. No, but it was, Sammy kicked me. Oh, Sammy, Sammy. Yeah. Okay, Sammy kicked me, and um, he got tight, bro. He told my mom, "Was like, you see, that's why they didn't want any kids there, bro. Like, you know, what I'm saying, I don't want them to get hurt." And um, my mom's like, all right, you know, I apologize. He'll stay over here. So the rest of the night, I just stood in the kitchen, which was like on the other side of the apartment. But I was, I was just thinking about what they were doing. I was like, the whole time, I was like, what are they doing? So that was like my real first big impression, I think, with the dance, I would have to say. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, you see it when you're like two or three years old. But when you're seeing it, you're just thinking it's people that are just kind of doing a bunch of craziness, you know what I'm saying? Until you see it in a so now moving forward, like a few years later, like when you now 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 you're seeing this more and more. You're seeing yeah. this more and more, right? So 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 let's move a little bit forward to like you're almost approaching to the time of like when you're really really getting into this. Like a few years later, what happened? Like like after that, like a few, oh, a few it wasn't years even later. Like years, bro. It was like every year, at least once a year there would be something that happens with b-boying that goes on that's like pretty prominent like the next year after that i was in kindergarten and in kindergarten okay. they held uh these like talent shows and they were they were just randomly you know bring us to the auditorium and say okay today we're just going to do some talent show we're going to have like talent show there or whatever so then they would ask us if we wanted to volunteer and do something and one one day i picked up my house like yeah i'll do it <clears throat> so i went up on stage and then I'm looking at like all of the classes because they brought a few classes down to like watch the talent show. And I'm looking at all these kids and I'm like, dang, I'm up here. Like, what did I do? You know what I mean? But then all of a sudden I just start top rocking and then I just start doing footwork. But my footwork is so choppy because I'm a little kid. Everybody yeah. starts booing me. They're like, boo, boo. <laughs> like, no, oh, this is crazy. I'm never doing this. That's again. New York City, bro. They will say boo to a little kid. It was terrible. So, like I said, periodically, it was just something that I grew up with. I would see people doing it, whether it was on TV, whether it was in New York. And um, there was a period of time where it wasn't around me as much. And I think that was probably. Um, but it's kind of fading out like late 80s. and Yeah, yeah. More towards like the late 80s. You know, it wasn't really around me as much. So um, that's when I got more into like martial arts. Um well, what I thought was martial arts, but was more like theatrical martial arts in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Which was yeah, because you're watching TV and you're imitating, yeah, you're, you're doing it. certain things. Yeah. And you know, as a kid, you that's one of the things, especially in that era, um, 70s and 80s, late 80s. You're on on, on public access channels that had martial arts, free TV, like a bunch of movies yeah, over exactly. and over. But they were, yeah, that's the laundromat. I don't know if your laundromat had like um, the 50 cent VHS and when you look there's a bunch of like kung fu movies and exactly. they're like they're one they're like 50 cents a dollar and you buy them well, they used to show them on TV they used to show them on TV first yeah yeah they were showing it on TV for a while on TV and then they would film it with the VHS they would record it to the tape and then we rewatch them you know so yeah but yeah definitely they used to have them stores too 
So yeah, that's so who that's, else besides them that kind of was an inspiration besides the martial arts, of course. You can mention, like you said, Jackie Chan, you said Incredible Breakers, of course, which is your uncles. And what about your uncle's friends? Do you know any of them? Or do you know any awesome, like dope, like dancers or one of your uncle's friends that you see on the normal time, like all the time you see them? Man, I want to answer your question in depth because I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want this to be, you know, some kind of like generic interview and shit. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's horror shit all the time when we talk, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We need each other to grow up. At one point in time, he was a huge inspiration for me. Like, like inspirations in my life were always interchangeable, they were always changing and shifting. You know what I'm saying? And, not one more, not one inspiration is more important than the next. Like you no, just, of course gotta, you got to like find new inspiration constantly. Like that's, that's an art. You know what I mean? That's, that's something that's a skill in and of itself to know when you're not feeling the same about something anymore, or at least whatever. Cause it's all right. The way that I feel about it is that you have this, this is, this is the thing. This is the thing that you're doing. It's breaking, mm -hmm. it's music, it's rapping, it's podcasts, it's video, whatever. This is the thing, right? And then we're pulling from different places to feed that thing. Okay. That's kind of what I did for my breaking. So the my breaking was the thing. And then I didn't know it was the thing until it became the thing. But I think the thing before I was breaking that I was really like connected with overall was just being an artist. I've never done this like this, bro. So I appreciate you having me on here, bro. Like, this is really dope. I'm grateful. You know, I'm grateful to your to you. I'm grateful to our friendship. Like, um, I couldn't think of anyone else to be honest with you for, for it to be the, um, part of the show because, for me, it was very important for it to be genuine the way our friendship is. And I consider you family. I've known you for over 20 years. And it's like, you know, you're like, I've always seen you like one of my little brothers. And and and, and we grew up to being like, you know, we already got freaking houses, married with kids. And like, we're on another level, you know what I'm saying? Like, I met you early 90s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's 2022. And we met each other early 90, and I'm going to say 95 because that's the memories that I have of me going to the tennis courts when I kind of met you. And I already heard of you, from, you know, through the grapevine, like Quick Step, Bam Bam, Rockefeller. They were mentioning a few things like, you know, Chino and Brian, but they will always mention like, oh, and their nephew. Their nephew, he's pretty good too. Like, you know, but I never heard it was Josh until well, you then. Know what? I think I recall um a time that we actually met even before that, my brother. Oh man, go ahead. Yeah, because I remember when you came back. That was when you came back the second time. But when we actually met, I was I was like invisible in a sense because I was that little kid that was kind of hanging out with everybody. People people connected with me and they, you know, they saw me, they knew I was my, you know, they knew I was family to Chino and Brian and I was hanging out, but, um, I was just learning, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was watching you guys, man. What, what we used to do was we used to organize a practice out in Kingsbridge in Walton high school. That's right. That was in the tennis courts. And it was mad ghetto because it was just in the tennis courts. It wasn't like any, you know, it was just, it was outside. We wasn't in no this school. Is, this is early 1995. I know that. I'm so yeah. clear to me. It's yeah. like it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, so what happened was that one day I was walking down the block and I saw these guys getting down in the tennis courts. It was only like two of them. And I, and I thought to myself like, oh, snap, my uncles do that. You know what I mean? Let me go over there and check out what they're doing because I thought and that. And you're not even into breaking that much at that time? I mean, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. You know what I was into? I was into writing poetry, writing raps. I was writing music. So I I, I knew of the dance because I, I, I grew up with them doing it. Like I knew that it was a thing, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't, it, it died out in the late 80s, in the late 80s, excuse me. So mm -hmm. I didn't, 
think anything of it. It was just like certain people in New York, you'll see people doing it every now and again when you, you know, just throughout the city and stuff, especially in Times Square. Shout out to the Breeze yeah. team, Tick and Tack, you know, uh, Wayne Bliss. Shout out to all those brothers because during that period of time in the late 80s when it was dying out, they were the ones that actually kept it alive. A lot of people want to say like, you know, people out in Europe and Germany and all oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to always see them every time my parents would go downtown, right? right. Every no, time. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I'm keeping it real. Like, um, Storm and all them came out from Germany. They came out from Europe and they found the people in the streets, street performing, keeping the dance alive. They were breaking, but they knew that it was it was a situation that wasn't really as popular anymore, too, at the same time. So they were also a part in keeping it alive. Shout out to Europe, shout out to Germany, Italy, all of them, you know what I'm saying? But they weren't the only ones, you know what I'm saying? There was people in New York that were still doing it. So it didn't necessarily die. It just, it 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 vanished from the media. It vanished from the mainstream. Yeah, the mainstream. Okay, yeah. okay. You so back to your story. You're walking and you look at the tennis walking, court. In the tennis court, they were getting down. I went to the tennis court. I'm like, yo, my uncles do this. They were like, word? They were like, yeah, I could do it too. Watch, you know what I'm saying? I was like, this little, <laughs> do you bro, recall who 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 were those kids? Yeah, um, well, one of them wasn't even a kid, one of them was already like in their 30s, you know. Shout out to Richie, you know, Richie. Oh Richie. man, aka uh, abuelo. Yeah, don't and, call him abuelo now, he don't like it. <laughs> nah. So, and then the, another one was gas. Rest in oh, peace. Oh man, rest in peace, man. Gas yeah. he used to beatbox too, right? He was bananas, he used to pop, you know what I'm saying? And he used to be didn't he beatbox too, right? <laughs> Box, yeah, and uh, hip hop as hell. Like these guys was with the boom box, and we had linoleum out there, and um, and also Shay. Remember Shay? Oh my gosh, Shay too, man. Damn. They were with them, so it was them three. And when I when I got with them and I seen them, and they were just free, you know what I'm saying, just dancing, busting like right there, you know what I'm saying, in the middle of the tennis court. Trains was going by. Um, anyways, long story short, bro, that was such a liberating moment for me because I was out of my house. So you what, threw down and what they were saying. I got down and 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 um, do you Rich, recall what you did? Yeah, I did like a I did some whack footwork and I did like a half ass butt spin. You know what I'm saying? Back <laughs> then, before you learn the back spin, you do a butt spin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like what ninety? Yeah, like ninety five. You know? Yeah, early ninety five. Yeah. So um, after that, Richie was like, "Oh, yo, you could do some shit." That's what's up. Like he got excited, and I think his excitement. Again, it, another source of inspiration, you know what I'm saying? At that wow, moment, wow, beautiful right, man, because he got excited that I could do the little bullshit that I did, but they were just kind of almost like he already knew certain things, he knew how to bust a windmill, you know. He's an old school cat, you know what I'm saying? But Gas was learning, he was just popping. And Shay, it was just like this perfect situation where kids that were like just learning, but they were like hungry to like do it because it was fun. And you get out the house, and then we were coming together, there was like three or four of us, so we were just like. We had each other, you know what I'm saying? And and at the end of that session, they were just like, yo, let's 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 bounce, let's go get a slice of pizza. You know what I'm saying? It was just fun. It was like, okay, let's roll the linoleum up, roll the linoleum up. And we're carrying this linoleum and we're walking with it through the Bronx. And we feel like we got the boom box and we just feel like we feel legit, like hip hop for real, you know what I'm saying? And we're just like, yo, like people are looking at us, like, yo, what what were they doing? You know what I'm saying? It felt like it's I was amazing, it felt like I was doing something, you know what I'm saying? So it was really dope. And that was a big point of inspiration for me as well. That was a different point in my life. I, I think at that time I was already 14. You know what I'm saying? So you kept going? You kept going or what happened? I was like 14, 15. But yeah, basically like what happened was, you know, he said, listen, you know, who, how did you learn that? Like who, who taught you? I said, yo, my uncle's Chino and Brian, you know, incredible. He's like, what? Incredible. Bre I know incredible breakers. I used to break with them. Like those are my homies. Bah, 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 bah. Wow. So it, it was fate. It was weird because he actually knew my uncles from back in the days because him and this guy named Chocolate, they used to get down with my uncles. So it was Richie and Chocolate and they were like, a, they were like partners, but every now and again, they would get busy. They would come visit my uncles in the fun house. Now, now you saying Chocolate, I'm going to assume the guy is black, right? <laughs> he was dark skin, yeah. He was dark, dark skin, skin yeah. dark skin. And now the um um the cast that you saw in the tennis court. Um, well, at that time, I know you didn't know their nationality or where they're from, like who, what. But Gas was Dominican, right? Yeah, yeah. Gas and, was the and, and abuelo was Richie was isn't he he's from, from Honduras? Nicaragua. No, he's Nicaragua. from Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Yeah. And, and what about um 
this cat that the other cat that was with him. Um, Shay, Shay is Boricua. He's he's yeah, of... Boricua. Look at that, like different different countries in the Bronx. And for those listening and for those watching this, you guys don't don't understand. 1995 in the Bronx, Kingsbridge, and I'm gonna assume it's in the evening because that's kind of like it's 1995. Not... Okay, people don't even know 95, especially towards uh the the beginning of the school year of that year, like around September, October. It was horrifying in New York, bro. It wasn't like hip hop in the 80s. It was hip hop in the 90s where you had East versus West. The Bloods first came to New York. They started slicing people's faces for no damn reason. They was just like going, they were warring with each other. You know what I'm saying? So, you had the Latin Kings, you had the Nietas, yeah. you had the. Oh, it was the terrifying, bro. Familia, you had if you were so little, many gangs. Facts. If you were a little, you know, four foot five, kid a child and you got to go to school on your own every day you got to take the train to go you know meet your grandmother at your uncle's house you got to go you know you're going to school in the morning there's gangs waiting just to like hit you with with with, with you remember the socks they used to put rocks in it yeah oh, oh, it. Only, um um pull um the eight ball from, oh, from ball. yeah pull, pull ball. Pull blades in their mouth and spit it out and like slice your face so that's what i that's what i had to walk and live in and and you know what I'm saying? That's what I that's why I was afraid as a kid because you had a fight. Like I got into fight with fights with kids in school before. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was just I didn't like fighting necessarily. I I loved the the theatrics of it, but it wasn't it wasn't like I wanted to go cuz it wasn't just like you get into a fight in New York and you're good and that's it. No. You're going to get into a fight and most likely you could die. Oh yeah. You know what I'm most likely they're going to slice your face or they're going to you know what I'm saying or do something like pull out a gun or whatever. So it wasn't like, you know, if it was always one on one, one D, like they used to say, it would be different. But it wasn't one D. You know what I'm saying? It was always they jumping you, or somebody's pulling out a gun and you're getting shot. So, you know what so what would you say the the percentage of darkness in that type in in that time frame in that time? What would be the percentage percentage out of a hundred from darkness to light that you oh, were bro. seeing? experiencing it's yourself it's infinite because you're not even aware that you're in any darkness bro like i could reflect on that now and be like oh it was this number but when you're a kid you just think that that's life you just think that that's reality you know what i'm saying to you it's 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 100 percent. you know what i'm saying all the time you don't know anything outside there, there's no percentage at nah. that time. you know what i'm saying you know what yeah. i mean so that's that was for me, I think one of the biggest things also that when I found these guys and just feeling like, yo, these guys had love in their heart and they were just doing something that was real innocent, that was positive, And it was it's dance. You know what I'm saying? They were they were dancing. They were in the street, street performing, dancing, breaking. And going back to how I met you that first time. It Boom, was which that's the question right there, my brother. Look at that. Boom. Right to that. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, brother. I don't know if you remember, but that shit got out, bro, because Gaz was going to, uh, he was going to the School of Arts. I forgot the name of it. Um, gra graphic Design. Graphic Design, bro. That school was so dope. And the artists that they produced were incredible, man. Like, In fact, I remember, um, I don't know if it's, wait, Graphic Design. I know it was a school, but this is years later, which I'll talk about that, but Graphic design, when I met Gas, I met Alberto. As a matter of fact, I met Richie there too because he went to break during the lunch. Uh, during lunch, yes. Yes. they would invite them. And then me, Kid Quick, Electric Smurf Tito, we went these there. Are these are all kids that they be, they, they was always running around in the streets. We, oh, they, my God. I'm going to put myself in there, but they take glass, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> bottles and throw them at the stores and break the windows just because just it was fun and laugh. And wild, wild, wild I, kids. Wild shit. Yeah, just wild shit. You know, we'd be and running. And that's how I heard about that practice. And you were going back to that, that it started yeah. getting around. Go ahead. To their school because they were in high school. I was, just, I was still in like junior high school. I was just getting into high school. In fact, I remember that I just got into ninth grade the the semester after that when school started because I met Honey Rockwell in the summer. Shout out to Rockwell Academy. I sent that I I I seen her in the summer school program in the gymnastics with with uh, and Kennedy with, with 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 Crazy Legs brother, right? I want to let people know, man, because you know I think a big part of why 
sometimes it's difficult for people to really absorb the information and, and understand the emotion in it all is because their imagination is lacking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when we, when we share in these things, we get excited about it because of course we lived through them and we experienced it. You know what I'm saying? And it's almost like we're going back into the memory of it, into the vision of it. And we're reliving it again. But at the same time, like, I just want to let, you know, all the viewers out there, I want to let y'all know, like, yo, when y'all watch these podcasts and it could be, it, it don't have to only be our podcast. You know what I'm saying? It could be anybody's podcast. And you really want to get something from it. Utilize your imagination. You know what I'm saying? Utilize the power of your consciousness to go back into those days with those people and relive the moment and look at it the way we're seeing it. You could see it through our lens. You know what I'm saying? You could feel it. I mean, there's documentaries on it. There's movies on it. You know, you see the energy of New York, New York City, you know what I'm saying? Namely the Bronx and 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 how how abandoned and and, and and burnt down and rugged and raw it was like how you see some of these third world countries now, you know what I'm saying? Like we was, we was living the same way. It was just in America. You know what I mean? So playing I just, with crack bottles, people don't yeah, know about man. that. Crack bottles, with little, the blues and the little vials of blue and the red separating and, them. And, you don't and, even and, know what that is. Right. Right. And, and I think we could all relate to that emotion of knowing like, yo, this this is sketchy, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I I, I got to be careful. I'm walking around the, yo, these people they looking at me on the train, yo. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, and that's one thing New York did at that time. It really heightened my instinct. It really heightens your your your. It's like they say, it's a concrete jungle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Society, it is. Sometimes in a the society, they can kill that instinct in you because you're so dependent on computers, you're dependent on cars, you're dependent on just the convenience of everything. In New York, it's a different hustle. It's a different grind because. You don't got nothing that's convenient around you. And in fact, everything that's around you, it might not even be much to the, to, to the next man. You know what I'm saying? But you got to, but you, the dope shit about it is you able to find a way to adapt to it and, and, and utilize that fear or whatever it is that you growing up in to, to, to make it, to make you stronger. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Definitely. All right. I hope you guys are enjoying the show right now, but this is going to really help me a lot. If you guys subscribe, share it, post it. This is not only going to help me, but it's going to help the hip hop culture. So on that note, we're going to carry on. It was, it was like, yo, these guys are getting down in the Bronx. They're in the tennis courts. You know, the vibe is dope over there. Over there. They got a few boys over there ready. And, and I think uh, also one of the things that helped um, start bringing that consciousness back in New York, excuse me, was that you did have certain crews and certain people like, uh, you know, Full Circle or Rocksteady. They were throwing these Zulu anniversaries. You had you had these things going on that if you was involved in in, in, in any sort of graphing in the graph culture or just in the music culture in general. And you, you, you know, you frequented clubs or you frequented certain spots. You're going to know that there's a movement that's kind of brewing. There's going there's some things going on. Yeah, something out, going on. Yeah. You're hanging out with somebody that knows somebody else that knows somebody else. Then they get, you know, it's going to get back to you and you're going to just pop up one day. You know what I mean? And begin to start meeting these people and being in this environment. So I think that's what was happening. And it was growing again in New York. It was become it was it was. I was basically a part of the rebirth of the culture in New York City. Yes, definitely you was. So it, at the beginning of that point in time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So not the not the early 80s wave or, or late 70s wave, but the 90s wave, which was the golden era of hip hop itself. Definitely. So, so, so the word is out. Yo, there's a practice in the tennis courts, Kingsbridge, 196, behind PS, um, uh, PS86, right? It was, it was Lehman, oh, no. Lehman College. That's yeah. right. It was Lehman College. And then you have Walton High School right next to that. And then to the left of that, if you're looking at it from my apartment building over the train tracks, to the left of that was the Annex building from the Annex. Six. And they I had remember like the street, that street, and there's the armory right there. And, the, and, yeah. uh, and then they had the, 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 the right, the British armory, which th that was colonized by by the British in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah, I remember. It's funny yeah, life is British, and I showed her the cap. I, 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 one time I rollerbladed through there. Like I went in and came out to the exit. Through. That's I bro, always where? wanted to see it, bro. They I, I, like a storehouse, a warehouse, or something for tanks. Bro, Kid yeah. Quick was like, "Yo, 
follow me. And I follow that kid. He went right through the armory and oh. I just hear, I just hear the military screaming and we just. No way, bro. <laughs> yo, I never forget. Come on, kid quick. What? Wow. <laughs> we, we could, we could make a freaking encyclopedia out of stories. You know what I'm saying? I'll, like, kid quick, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, yeah. You still got that question right down there. Where you <laughs> met me, brother? <laughs> oh, getting back to that, uh, we had this jam kind of thing going on in the tennis courts, bro. Remember that? Yeah, because I, I went three times. The first, the first two times, first time. I didn't, even, I, I didn't even talk to you, or I didn't even know who's no. Josh or nothing. No. We're the talking third about time. Family. Yep. Yeah, because I was standing, I was standing a little bit away from y'all, watching y'all talk and stuff like that. But I was practicing on a little pizza box. Bro, so, I remember Ga Gas tells me about the practice, and then I show up the first time, and then Sammy wasn't there that first time. Then the second time I go, Sammy was there. There was a white car with the lights. Um, I, um, What was your boy's yes. name? I hit in the linoleum at night. Yeah. Yeah, and there was a little pizza box on the oh, left, yeah. and and I was there, and I remember I went at that time. I was down with a crew called Living on Concrete LOC. LOC. Shout out, LOC, shout out to shout out LOC. to Greg, Angel, Bo, um, Elvis, oh, um, Roy, um, Cleve. Remember Cleve? Cleve, yeah. He was kind of like our crew too, but he was really RTR at that time. Ready to rock was smirking all of them. So oh, yeah. I show up to that practice the third time. And continue from your view, because I don't know. I haven't met you yet. So my, my, my man, I remember that day, bro. Like it was yesterday. That was crazy. That was like, it was just me, Richie and like gas and cheeky. Remember cheeky? Cheeky, cheeky. I remember cheeky. We were right. there just breaking, practicing. And it was just like a regular day practice. But then all of a sudden you look behind the fence, you start seeing a whole line of bro. men. Boys, like it looked it like it was like day. 20. It was like 20 of us. Oh, it was, yeah, it was more than that. It was more when probably, it, yeah, you got there a little bit more in the evening time. A few people already yeah. had, yeah, yeah, it, it was a little dark already, yeah. But earlier on, that, that shit was going on for hours, bro. Like before you got there, and they wow. were like, eh, but I would say it was like at least like 30 people, 40 people. It was a lot of people, bro. No, when it, I got there, that shit was like there was like one, two, like five ciphers, yeah, in bro, the tennis court. Including people that were just coming to watch, you know what I'm saying? There were just people that were like watching. And this is not a jam. This is a regular outside you know tennis court oh. practice. And it just, it was incredible. The energy it was like, it was like a magnet, bro. All these people started coming from all over the place, from all over New York, from Brooklyn, from Queens, from everywhere. And they just went to the tennis court. This little old tennis court that we were breaking at. That. So I what happened? You, you see about. these people coming this way. I seen you're like, coming in. Yo, they went, they didn't even say nothing, bro. They just got there, they took off their bag, they start cracking their knuckles, and dudes just start getting down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was no stretching out, it was no warming up. These dudes, they seen us, they were like quiet, and they were just boom, started getting down. As soon as one person get up, boom, another person went down, and they were like attacking the floor. Like my, my now dude, the question I is, was I part of that? <laughs> You came a little bit after, but yes, you after were. That, right? You came maybe like I want to say maybe an hour into that, so okay. it kind of started getting dark already. And there were some people there. They were maybe like they were there for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and then they started to bounce. But then we stood with the we stood with about like 20, 25 people that stood yeah, there. Yeah, that shit was mad people. I was like, what there, the which, hell? Which was bugged out because it was just only me and like two other guys. Like most of the practice days, like I think we would go there every Tuesday or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So out of out of nowhere, you you're dancing with all these people, but then a few of them start to fade away, and then there are only certain people that stood there that started standing out, and you were one of them because you were you were talking with my uncle. So it's like certain only certain people started really engaging with us, like yo, yeah. like what are you guys doing here? Like who, you know who started this, and you know people like such as yourself, inquisitive, they're asking questions, just cool peeps that they just started becoming a little bit more at the forefront and i started paying attention to him and i was watching you even when you were getting down and you started busting your windmills and you was busting your aerial moves and your swipes and you had like capoeira moves too so it was like damn so and i remember that movie only the strong came out yeah man and that was a movie too that was like yo like super inspiration it yeah so 
the inspiration in that was real native. It was African, you know what I'm saying? And that, that was something that I always resonated with, you, you know what I'm saying? Which certain people in my family, man, unfortunately, they didn't really resonate with that aspect of it because their grandfather was real racist. So he raised them a certain way. And, you know, certain people in my family, they, whenever I would like be like, yo, hip hop, or, you know, when it, when it became hip hop and I would talk about it, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we don't know about that over here because it was just breaking. It was just this, it was just that, you know, it was, it wasn't like it was easy for them to adapt the essence of what that came from, which was, which was African culture, which was native culture. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was something that we did to liberate our soul. You know what I'm saying? And connect with the drum, you know what I'm saying? But I remember you clearly, bro. And when you started doing your windmills, they were so clean and they were like, mad high and it's real like you had a split your leg yeah 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 because of the martial arts already and I, I didn't understand what head mills were i just knew <laughs> that's all i knew yeah yeah so and when i was watching you it was like you was just mad strong and i was you know i'm a kid so i'm, I'm looking i'm looking up to people that have moves like you guys have moves already you know what i'm saying and i had like a hand glide and i had like a back i remember looking to the left and you were in the pizza box i think you had like a windbreaker and you took the windbreaker and you put it right here like this you know what i'm saying and then you started yeah. doing hand glides and yeah. then from the hand glides you did a dope yeah. backspin back bro yeah. that backspin that's when i was like wait i didn't have backspins <laughs> like that bro there was a little something there a little potential <laughs> come on yo my eyes lit up because you that's know i got it because you I came in Oh, you had like I think you even had like munchies too. You was already doing yeah. munchies. You um, I I kind of had it. Like a, I think you was trying to do the straight legs. That's what it was. It wasn't munchies. Yeah. It was yeah, the tombstone. Legs. Yeah, yeah. I wanted I wanted to do that. I remember at that time. Maurizio, uh, used to rock that too. Maurizio the circles, you, and I used to like doing circles because that's of what gymnastics. It was. That's what it circles. was. That's yeah, what it like, was. Yeah, like like the flares. I did flares, but my shit. I wanted to look different. Like, I was like, I like that. Let me do the circles. Yo, bro, if, all I know is that at your prime in New York, nobody was fucking with you, bro. And that was your prime, I think. It looked like, like even a little after that. Like, Yeah, I we, think it was like the four yeah. years until then I started doing shows and I fell off. <laughs> you know, we, we, started, we had to eat. So we all, yeah, we all, yeah, yeah. I so, think that's what it was because I started in 94. I don't think then, I, I don't, I don't think that you I don't think you fell off like that. And honestly, I take that back. I don't even think that was your prime because I seen footage of you even after that. And you was going crazy in that footage. Like your your flips was more tight, like you had more, you had your ball up, yeah, you your munch mills. Oh, you yeah, had, yeah. But that that's that's and, after when I started training with you, which that night when I saw you and I saw that backspin, I knew yeah, I left home. And I remember we took the train and I was talking to Greg mm. um, and I'm talking to Greg and I'm like, bro, you see that kid's backspin? And he's like, bro, he was like, it's like a blur. And I said, yo, that was quick. He's like, yo, because you know, we Dominicans in the Heights and we always had competition. He's like, yeah, but he's whack. Yeah. That's what Greg <laughs> said. He's like, yeah, but he's whack. That's all. That's, right, that's the only thing. Yeah. He said, that's the only thing he had. Yeah. That's what he's that's all that's what he told me, and I'm like, really? How you know that? I seen it before, man. Like, because Greg was kind of involved with he already knew people. I didn't really know that yeah. much people. So I guess he seen you and know he probably knew you were Chino and Brian's like because he had kind of like a little yeah. it don't matter like, how you are, bro. You will always be whacked to someone. Yo, for real, dude. Oh, like it don't matter how you can and, and I was. I was kind of arguing with him. I'm like, nah, man, he's probably holding back because that backspin, I remember Bo. It was I a lot said, of territorial back in the day, too. You got to admit that, like, because we always used to hide our moves and be like, yo, I wonder yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. what. We didn't have yeah. no internet, none of that, bro. So when we seen each other, we were like, oh, shit. Like, it was it was, it was, was a lot of. Yeah, respect. I was like, the only thing I'm going to do is flips and windmills. Don't yeah, do nothing you else. Show all your moves. You don't want to yeah, show. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what Greg said. Yo, just do your windmills. Because he was like the leader of the crew. So he was like, yo, when you go there, Flash, 
just as a matter of fact there was no flashback at that time I, that wasn't even my name hmm. which is which is hilarious i'll get back to that later but i remember that he told me he's like yo just do your windmills and do your flips you could throw some of your kicks or whatever you want to do but don't do nothing else and i was like all right so Greg is like, yo, you got to leave it to me because I got the style. I got the freezes because he was the illest one of all of us. Like yeah. at that time. I like Shay. And, like, um, not Shay. Um, Bo? Bo not, not Bo. Uh, the other one, you mentioned him too. You said he was with RTR, but I think he oh, was. Oh, 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 um, 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 Cleve. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cleve was like, he was just clean, smooth. Look, he was. body was just like that. Yeah, he was a dope. He was a graffiti writer too. He was dressed fresh. Um, he had expensive gear on, like he, he like. And yo, and he was older. He was older already. Like he had a real job and everything. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was like, you know, what I'm saying, like he had a oh, job bro. and like. When he got down, you could see strength. Like he was like strong, but he was. Yes, yeah. And his chairs would be like pick, and then he was yeah. his chair pick. Always rock clean. I'm like. Man, this guy clean, and he used to tell me like, "Yo, you gotta do everything both ways." He used to tell me yeah. that, and I'm like, wow. in the brother, But it's crazy because that night I met you. In my eyes, you saw me already, but for me, I saw you that night. I went up to you, and I don't know if you remember. I was like, "Yo, bro, that's dope." Yeah, you did. And, when I was at the pizza I, box, with was the pizza box, box, and I said, "Yo, man, you freaking." They didn't, let me, the, they didn't let me on to the linoleum, so I had to go yeah. practice on. Now you notice Bo didn't go up to you, Greg didn't go, none of them, because they had that shit. Like they didn't want to give credit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I went up yeah. to you, I said, man, I think he was talking to Sammy or something. And I, I was like, you know, I didn't want them to talk shit to me. So I went up to you kind of like on the low. He was he's cool. Our energy was always like magnetic. Yeah, so no, I man. went up to you and I was like, yo, what up, man? You dope, bro. What's your name? And you were like, Josh. They call me little Josh. I said, Oh man, you dope, man. And, and, and then you were like just humble, bro. Like it was just like the most purest of the innocence of, of of a Bronx kid that has not been tampered, has not been nothing. Like like you just look like so pure, man. Like like wow. you saw a lot of shit. I already I saw it in your eyes. Like you saw a lot of shit because you were in it. You know what I'm saying? You were in the BX while shit is happening and everywhere and i remember that after that i i didn't see you again for a while right. it was probably like eight nine ten months yeah and dude i never forget i run into abuelo richie and richie's in the train he said yo what's up Vlad? i said what's up man how you doing he said yo we got this practice in kingsbridge is in the fifth floor blah 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 he told me about the practice Mm -hmm. And then I was like, "Yo, I'm going." If you re if you remember, Greg wasn't there. Nah. Elvis wasn't there. None of them. I went alone because they were that crew was more. Yo, nobody in that gymnasium, bro. No. So let me tell you, they they. I ain't gonna put the shit out there, but you know they nah. were doing shit that I wasn't part of. That right, I started right. like. I started like really knowing who they were, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is like some real shit." Like, I just want to be a beep. I want to break. That's all I want to do. Right. So you know, they were doing the thing. Um, um, they're doing the thing. So I started kind of like little by little. One, they didn't want to. They didn't want to enter anything. I mean, they didn't want to go to no jams. They didn't want. They wanted to keep everything to themselves. They didn't want to show anyone anything. They didn't want to vibe with anyone. And I kind of felt like. A I'm lot not of, gonna you were special though, bro. Like, because most of us, you know, growing up in New York in those days, we had a lot of like deep insecurities because we were we were we were angry. Yeah, you know, so so but you weren't angry, bro. No, I was I was happy because it, I felt like they let me out of prison, like <laughs> I'm out, like because I, I come from kind of like a conservative family somehow. Very strict in the sense yeah, of like big, big people around you, yeah, you could tell. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 you know, I got raised by my mom and dad, and I, you know, I had a good family. They raised me right, so it was like you can't be outside in the street. So once I hit a certain age, and I hit 17, I was 17 when I met you, bro. 
and mm. and and I remember that it was okay. My dad said, "You're 17. You're supposed to be 18, but you know what? It's okay." At 17, oh, wow. he said, "You could do what you want." 17. Yeah, I was 17. So I was like, whoa. All right. Plus, I didn't act like I was like 17 year old kid at that time. Oh, I was I, I was a, yeah, I was around I was around the 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 older people, so I knew kind of how to act. Plus, you know, there was no drugs involved with me. I wasn't messing with none of that stuff. So for me, it was the school, martial arts, go home. There's nothing else you have to look for outside. Mm -hmm. everything outside is drugs killing violence robbery you don't have no friends that's how i was brought up in dykeman washington heights like that was my life like none of those my daddy used to take me out the window like look see all those guys over there all of those of course in spanish mm -hmm. none of those people are your friend and i was like this i was like <laughs> none of them now, one of them are your friends. They will rob you. They will do this. He was right. My dad used to say, a friend is a dollar in your pocket. Wow, look at that. So they knew what they were talking about. They knew yeah. what they were talking about. So for me, when I saw the light of the invitation for Richie, he invited. The fact that oh, he Richie gave me. Right. Yeah, uh, Richie Aguero. I saw him in the train and he, I felt like he gave he me the gold. Where did he know you from? After the after the 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 tennis court, oh, where I met you. I met in the tennis courts already. So then, after this was the second time you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So meaning after the tennis courts, the first time. How did you hear about that? Gas, gas told me about it in graphic design. Oh. He, I went to a practice in the cafeteria, and then oh, okay. he was talking about a practice that he does in, in in the tennis courts. So then I was like, oh. I'm gonna show up one of these days. So I showed up and that's when I met you. So oh. after I after I met you, I didn't see you again for like a whole year. Yeah. So a, a whole year passes or maybe a year and a half, bro. No, and it was probably. I want to say it was probably a year. It was probably a year because when when we were at the tennis courts, it was like late August and it was getting cold. And we were like, damn, we got to get to school. We got to go. On, we got to find time. Springtime yeah. 96. I yeah. remember because I just came back from DR. I was out there for a whole month. I remember now. Yeah, 1996 was, springtime, yeah. like springtime. So he oh, sees so me. You're saying, in, um, you're saying um the be you know what? You're right. I think it was the beginning of um that summer. It was springtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was springtime. So um Richie Abuelo, I run into him on the train and he's like, Yo, man, we gotta practice in the school. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like. On the train? That's crazy. Yeah, I was like, I'm going. What train? The four line. Four line. Yeah, yep. and it was like, because he lived like on Burnside or something. Where where did he live on? He lived in the projects, South Bronx. Yeah, but, but um, he, he was like. Tremont. Yeah, you got to get off of Tremont. Tremont, Tremont. So what? at that time, I had a girlfriend at that time, Matt close to his crib. Mm. So I'm taking the train, like, um. I get out of the train, I see my girlfriend, and then I'm going back home. Mm -hmm. So I get out when I'm going up the escalators to take the train. I right. see Richie coming down. I didn't recognize him because I kind of didn't remember who was who in the tennis court. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then he was like, hey, and I was like, and I was like, hey man, I met you. I'm gonna break that. And he's kind of like explaining to me like who he is. Dang. And I'm like, oh, and I was like, oh snap, that's dope. He's like, Man, come to practice, man. You dope, bro. You were really dope. Like, he's kind of remembering, like, me. Yeah, he was like that. Like, he was at, like... At, yeah, he saw me in the tennis court. So, he kind of rem he kind of remembered, like, I was doing power moves. And so, I was like, yo, man, I'm going to go. When is it? He's like, oh, the practice is only wow, on Saturday. that's how it was. Okay. Yeah. So, is it only on Saturdays was the practice? Yeah, it was, it was Saturday evening. Saturday? No, no, no. It was later on towards the evening when you came i had the blue the blue puma um nylon um spin yes. jack yeah yep yep, yep, yep. On it. and and it was just me and you in the gym bro yeah so so let me tell you so then i'm like i'm a go so i show up if you remember i went on my rollerblades yeah i it was took late, my rollerblades yeah 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 it was evening so 
I lived in Dy I live in Dykeman Street. You live in Kingsbridge, 196. That's about a good 40 minute rollerblading, yeah. an hour and a half walking, um, 20 minutes if you take the B12. Mm. Remember the B12? The B12 yeah, yeah, yeah. from 207. I'll take the B12. I'll we'll go over the bridge, yeah. and they will leave me right okay. under the four you train. Because huh? you were on the two train. Yeah, no, no, that's the one train. I could take it to one, train and the nine. one and a nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, it was, it was farther that way. I figured out B twelve over two hundred seven uh, over the bridge, and okay. then it'll do this whole crazy thing, and then it'll stop at Kingsbridge, right? Mm -hmm. The pizzeria cashier right there, uh, and uh, the yeah, train, yeah. the train was right there, and I was like. Man, no, yeah. Jerome. It used to stop in Jerome Avenue. Oh, it's called Scott LaRock now. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called Scott LaRock. That's the name of it. Wow, the amazing. So I remember I got off on Jerome Avenue. Sometimes if I didn't have enough money to take, I didn't have a token to take the four train or, <laughs> yeah, a token at that time. Or if if I just had a token, remember they'd give you a little, the bus, they would give you like a little paper thing. Like yeah. a little, so yeah. you could transfer to the train. Yeah, 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 yeah. So right before the I metro was, cards and all that. Yeah, before the metro card. So he, the the bus driver, he'll give me a little, like a little. It looked like a little paper card. Yeah. And I'll go upstairs. Dollar like fifty, right? To to get on the bus. It's like a dollar twenty. A dollar twenty five. A dollar twenty five at that time. It like a dollar fifty or something. I yeah. Think. So when I went upstairs and I. And, and and this is my first time, so I was like, man, I've never done this. So I go upstairs, and I went the opposite way downtown, which I don't know. My brain thought that I was like uptown, and you lived a little downtown. So, mm. bro, I took that shit all the way to one twenty fifth. No way, bro. You I know one twenty fifth when you could transfer oh. to other lines in yeah, Harlem. And I'm like, what the? Oh man! And I transfer uptown. So wow. now, <laughs> you I, yeah, so now I go right back up, get off on Kingsbridge, walk towards the tennis court, walk to the school. I go in. That's when I met um this cat, the guy wow. that runs. Uh, Brian. The, Brian. Brian, 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 Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I met him, and he's like, yo, the practice up there, sign here, sign the waiver, blah, blah, blah. I go upstairs, and bro. I never forget this. Fourth floor. Dun, 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 dun. I'm already hearing freestyle disco new wave music playing in the background. Um, um, and I remember what song is it? Um, Slack. Body, slack. Oh, slack. It was either Body Mechanic or Slack. I'll, I'll it was stay Slack. It was Slack. Uh, and that, uh, you know, I can't imitate that uh, song, but yeah. Slack and, and the artist was Slack. Slack, Slack. <laughs> Right. That's the name of the artist, Slack Slack. Yeah. So, bro, I hear that, and that shit is playing, and I'm like, oh, it's all the way upstairs. And I remember I come out, Yo, you, you know, go they got to like, yeah. all the way up, bro. By the time I was up there, I was already warmed oh, up. The staircases were dark. It wasn't even, like, that light. It was, like, dark. And you had, like, a little light, but it was, like, it was, like, gates. Yes. Gates, and yes. You go up. That's just wild. So I went in, and then I go down the hallway, and then I make that left to the other hallway and I see the door open and I just see this beast spinning <laughs> elbows, 90, backspin, headspin, windmill. And I'm walking towards map power moves and I'm like, what the? Yo, this is great. And I, it was just you. I remember your face. Yeah, I remember you. You were like, oh, it was only you there. And then I approach you and I start talking to you. And then you're like, yeah, man, I met you a long time ago. And I was like, yeah, yeah, man. You remember the piece of I said, bro, I was like flabbergasted. Like, I couldn't even believe that you're that kid. Like, mm. how? Like, how you did that in five months? <laughs> like, yeah, think about it. Is this is like October or 95? And then I see you in the spring of 96, and you're already doing like shit that like I will see on videotapes. Like, how? I wasn't doing that shit. I'm like, how the hell did he do that in five months? 
Now, remember, you were breaking. I was out clubbing, chilling, girls here, girls there. Breaking was like, whatever. It was the pimp of all pimps, bro. You yes. Had to- <laughs> <laughs> you had that come on super lock. <laughs> Oh man, bringing those girls to that school just to impress them, man. That was you don't remember that shit. I bring always different girls and be like, just sit there and they'll watch. Kind of girls watching, but I used to hate when dudes would come off the street and just sit and watch. It was a it was oh my god, yeah. Yeah, like the girls because we would go off. We'll go when we see girls, remember that we were like, yo, yo, there's like five girls sitting, go off. It's a different point of inspiration right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a different point of inspiration. But yeah, that's when I met you, man. It was amazing. But let's move on because we'll be here for 20 hours, bro. So, so now fun. the next question yep. is the fact that you started breaking way earlier. Now, this is the following question after that. If you can go back to your rookie self, what would you tell yourself and why? So think about you back in the days when you were a rookie and you and he just showed up right now and you you go to a practice, you're like, little Josh, what would you tell yourself? Honestly, I probably would tell myself some of the same things I was already telling myself, but I would also probably tell myself to read a lot more. Books? And and read and read different things. Yeah, like like really like like apply myself. See, it was tough, though, because academically, I never had a problem. Like, I was reading, I was doing all that. But the television, you know, we was constantly just being put in front of the television. And that's a great way to that shit. That's a great way to learn, though. You know what I mean? I learned a lot about the world around me and outside worlds, too. You know what I'm saying? That that existed that I was like, man, maybe one day I'll I'll, I'll know what it is to be in that world. You know what I mean? So I I, I read, but in a different way. But if if I if there was one thing that I would probably tell my rookie self was would definitely be to um, to dance maybe from a little bit more of a different place and also to read more because I feel like a lot of a lot of my dancing was done out of out of anger and just kind of like like I mean maybe it was a positive thing that I was able to channel it that way for the time being you know for what it was Um, but ultimately um, when, 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 when you're not conscious of the fact that there's pain, that you're living with pain and, and you're doing something out of anger, um, you're putting a different type of stress on your body. You know what I mean? And you might, you might get the moves really fast because that's why I got everything that I got. That's why I learned so fast because I, I I'm like bugged out about how fast you learned that. Well, I felt the only way to really get out of out of that prison, you know what I'm saying, out of out of that household, out of that neighborhood was to really apply myself. And I remember there were days where I would go to the hallway and I would be practicing and I would be crying because something just happened in the house. Like I saw like somebody get put into a hospital, you know what I'm saying, on a stretch of bleeding. And then I'm like, this is some shit that's happening like every other week or so, you know what I'm saying, in the house. And people are just fighting these demons that you know essentially i would come to find out were passed down to them through generations of abuse and things that were pretty much imposed on me but i just had a a, a, like i had this i don't know like i'm grateful i always had good energy to the extent where i was attracted to good energy you know what i'm saying i wasn't attracted to to some bullshit like I, i felt like it was pointless to to be born into this life be given a gift like like this life you know what i'm saying which is a gift and then utilize that time to be to be expressing your energy and like trying to rob somebody you know what i'm saying or or, or getting deep into some kind of bad drug or because i seen everybody else getting into that stuff around me and i realized that then why are you choosing to stay alive like it's kind of like suicide you know what i'm saying it's like pointless in a sense to like so hurt. you're inside in your house violence is happening you go to the hallway you're crying Violence is happening in the hallway too because some shit's going like, down. You my go head. outside. You go outside I'm, to the street. So There's I'm violence literally. as well. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm breaking out in the hallway like after this thing just happened, and I'm so angry and, and hurt and sad that I'm, I'm, I'm practicing this move so hard. I'm, I start bleeding from my head. Like my whole my forehead gets cut open because the floor. That's not the. That's not the first time that happened to you, by the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but that's, that's what I mean. It was weird. It was like it was being done and it was being channeled in a certain way. And it was almost like I'm I'm letting this energy out, you know, and that was the that was the intensity of the energy. You know what I'm saying? It is what now, it is. Did you know you were doing this with an exit route or you didn't even know if there was an exit route? No, nah, I just knew that in order for me to really, really get out of that situation, I had to become something of a god and i always looked up to superman and and all of these you know what i'm saying it was another wow story. that's amazing you know I mean? so i felt like if i could if i could become so powerful that it, it goes back to that question superman you wanted to be yeah that's another point of inspiration you know what i'm saying extraordinary you just wanted to be beyond people yeah right? i want to have powers and i feel like breaking when you get to a certain level you, it's it's you literally have powers you know what i'm saying like and that's how it feels to be able to manipulate and control your body with ease and spin and create these vortexes where you don't even know where you are but you just know where the ground is you're able to just push off the ground and flip and land on your feet and go back and you know so it's it is it's like a power and i felt like i achieved that you know what i mean so so you will tell yourself read more books learn how to balance basically because these books will kind of guide you into learning spiritualism and certain things to like kind of like the stuff that you know now like i like, felt like i read books but i didn't read different books like all I, I read the bible we grew up reading the bible a lot you know the christian bible so we grew up we grew, i grew up reading like i said i read i think a lot of uh certain type of foundational wisdoms and and knowledge and lessons when it comes to spirituality comes definitely comes from like a christian background but I feel like that was just more of a foundation for me. I feel like I feel like there was something deeper on the line, you know what I'm saying, even those those concepts, you know what I'm saying? And, and and that that goes through through every different type of religion. At least for me, I see there's a commonality. There's a there's a spirit. also the, the the dogmatic behavior of the people in that religion will kind of limit people of not searching for other things yeah that like might enlighten you right 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 and it was also that it was that it was like what you asked the question like what would you tell yourself and i would tell myself to keep my keep i, I had an open mind i did you know what i'm saying but sometimes the conditioning is so is so strong you know what i'm saying that you you default to to what you being taught and if I if I could tell myself something, the rookie self, you know, old me, I would tell myself, yo, do not accept anything, question everything, and gravitate towards love, regardless of what it is that you're reading, that you always know something is a lie when you read it, if it's if it's putting fear into you. You know what I'm saying? If it's teaching you how to be evil if it's teaching you what if something is teaching you what evil people did whether it was past tense present tense or future tense it doesn't matter it's still planting the seed of evil in you because now you know what evil is defined by mm -hmm. so for me it was like sometimes you you acquire certain behavior patterns not even towards anyone else just maybe to yourself where you you hating yourself or you're confusing yourself you know what i'm saying or you insecure, you know, so I would, I would definitely, you know, I would bust my butt a lot more to also level up on a more of an intellectual level and like, it, you know, but I'm grateful that it went the way that it did. And I don't, you know, you would have not I, been incredible, Josh, man, because anything that I did communicate to myself, but obviously if you want a more of an efficient way to, to develop yourself, or at least me reflecting on that, that's how I would have done it to develop myself a lot sooner. I wasn't given the proper tools to navigate in, in society, in, in the world that I was born into, the way that certain people were. I wasn't given the proper tools. You know what I'm saying? I could say that off the rip. I was I was given the best tools that people knew how to give me at the time. But there were other people that were that were already acquiring incredible points of knowledge and information and just tools to to to, to think different and to and to build themselves up and, and, and take confidence in themselves as a young man, you know what I'm saying? Or young woman, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really given confidence by anybody around me like that. It was almost like if somebody had confidence around us, you're almost like you're taught to hate that, you know, you're taught yeah. to, to, 
to feel like, oh, well, they think they all that, or they, you know what I'm saying? Or they trying to act white, or they trying to act this, or they trying to act that. You know what I'm saying? It was. Yeah, it was because a, you're getting educated. You're getting educated. Yeah, it and, was. Real and, and then people yeah. want to keep you where they are. Like if the, the level of frequency or knowledge they have, let's say there's a ratio for one to 25 and they're at level five and you want to pass five, they want to keep you at five because now you're kind of threatening them with your education and your knowledge and right. just things that you've learned in your life. Now like, leading to that, no. leading, leading to, to another question that comes from what you're telling yourself as a rookie, what, what is the hardest lesson you learned there? Like at that time, what was the hardest lesson you learned? Hmm. As far as what breaking life, like anything able... that has to do with your upbringing, your life, your experience, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're your own director of your movie. So if you're making the movie since you were a kid, when you kind of develop the perception of reality of what's going on in life, what was the hardest thing you learned? Like, in general, um, I can't really say that. Or lesson, lesson, lesson that you learned. A lesson, something. It could be something that happened to you. It could be something. Well, I, could that... you, I could tell you. I could tell you the hardest lesson that was introduced. That I think, you know, everyone struggles with and 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 does their best. That does their best. Excuse me to actually learn is the lesson of of your 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 physical mortality in this in this vessel you know what i'm saying the har the hardest lesson for me if i can actually revolve around that as being a lesson was you know seeing seeing my dad murdered in front of me and learning how to deal with that you know what i'm saying that wasn't really something well he was he was kind of i always say he was murdered because he didn't come back as himself he came back as like some different type of thing entity or whatever i don't know whatever yeah, so, so he was already dead before he was physically he was, dead he was in coma, so he was literally you know what i'm saying he was already he was gone for a minute but then when he came back out of that you know he just wasn't the same and it was a different type of abuse at that point it was a different type of dynamic you know what i'm saying with my pops and that was that was the lesson that i had to learn you know what i'm saying whatever whatever that lesson was that that was the lesson it was it was like so so if you could try to describe it and try to go deep into your psyche in the sense of that lesson what was it that you learned how to be how to be self sufficient you know what i'm saying how to how to how to basically create your own your own income your own life your own way your own you know what i'm saying like Krishna Murti said, you know, be a light to yourself, you know what I'm saying? Type of thing. So I would go out in the streets and street perform and make money and bring money home for my moms. I couldn't depend on my dad. I couldn't depend on, you know, welfare and all that, you know, I had to bring money home. So that was the lesson for me. It was mm -hmm. like how to, how to make money in the streets, how to survive, how to, how to be self-sufficient, you know what I'm saying? Um, and again, that was because of, you know, it was like a domino effect, you know what I'm saying? It was something that, that I was forced into kind of having to learn a lot sooner than most people, but I'm grateful I did. You know what I mean? You get better at it. Um, like I said, the earlier you, the earlier you acquire these tools, then the sooner you could begin to work on them and, and advance them as you get older, you know, you, you, you they develop, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that was definitely a lesson. I would say if, if, if I had to say, if I had to give an example of a lesson that I've learned, that was probably that, that that's that's actually uh what would you say? Um almost like a double-edged sword, like it's something bad that happened, but something good came out of it because you ended up learning how to be self-sufficient and right. how to do your own thing and become a man, like like you were basically obligated to become a man right at an early age. And, and like save your family, basically. Like, you know what I'm right. saying? Let's move on to what are some books, audio books you would highly recommend? The fact that you got into reading books and all that stuff later on. Like, if it would be from the top of the dome right now, like what will be something books, audio books that you will just recommend for the audiences watching, yeah, listening? Uh, there's a few of them, man. Some good stuff out there. Um, 
what helped me out, one of the one of the audio books I, I used to go to sleep to like for like two years straight and just listen to was The Power of Now. It's very Beautiful powerful. Book. Yeah, that book is incredible. I really like that book. Um, Think and Grow Rich. That was another yes. audio book that I would always listen to like every night. Um, helps help me to really understand money. You know what I'm saying? Help me to understand the the mindset of of being. It's wealthy. funny you put me on to Rich Dad Poor Dad. I believe Rich Dad Poor Dad was another one. That was a really cool book. I started getting a lot. I started getting into. Um, I went from self help kind of books like the Four Agreements and those type of audio books and even hardcovers. You know, I would read the hardcovers and then later on I got the audio books just because I wanted to read it again because I already read the hardcovers so, <clears throat> a great way to really program your subconscious so the power of now think yeah. and grow rich yep um, um the four agreements the four agreements man those yep. are some powerful books you throwing down there man yeah I, I i was i was heavy in those type of books for a minute i think a lot of people were i think there was a time where um a lot of a lot of wisdom ancient wisdom and and and, and insight from from that culture, from those, from those ancient cultures started to kind of resurface, especially mm -hmm. like the Eastern philosophies and Zen and Taoism and things like that. I've always been into, I've always, like I said, you know, the Asian martial arts and just, you know, what I'm Eastern saying? culture, Eastern culture, Eastern culture, um, the history and everything. It's African culture. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, it's all essentially, it's all African culture, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. It, it was something that I started gravitating to. And uh, those books definitely helped me out a lot, especially right before I went to sleep. I think right before you go to sleep is the most important time to to um, add some programming. If the, if that's what you're trying to do, if you want to if you want to learn something different, you know, listen to an audio book as you're going to sleep or right before you go to sleep, you know, or watch something that is going to basically get planted into your subconscious so now your brain is learning on auto automatic pilot you know what i'm saying it's not like you got to try to memorize anything it's just your mind is going to absorb it right before you sleep so that's a little hack you know what i mean that um i, I was able to any out. other books any other books you want to like shout out or that you will recommend uh, to yeah the alchemist, watching? little prince oh man the alchemist too yeah uh, a lot of osho books you know, I know a lot of people, they, they thought he was a little bit of a weirdo, but I think it's because they didn't really understand his philosophy. They didn't understand his approach to meditation. You know what I'm saying? Everything in life is a meditation. You know what I mean? Having a conversation is a meditation. It's just different forms of meditation. So what Osho would do was in this day and age, in this, you know, society, the way everything is happening is very, um, there's a lot of nervous energy. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people looking for something to escape through, you know, whether it be sex, whether it be drugs, whether it be whatever. And what he would do was he would put people in the room and tell them, you know what? Let yourself loose. You know what I mean? Do what you feel. Be yourself, whatever you want to do. Whatever you're feeling. Do it. You know, some people, they would dance. Some people would sing. Some people would just scream. Some people would. And to the outside world that that's foreign, it's alien. It looks like people are unhealthy or it looks like people are losing their minds. But what he was doing was basically bringing what was already down deep beneath the surface and he was bringing it out. He was exposing it. And and mm -hmm. there's a there's a belief in within his philosophy that said if whatever you got inside of you, if you're able to capture it, and, and let it out of your body, whether you write it down, you know, you get hold a journal and you write all your thoughts down on a piece of paper or you channel it through dancing or you or you write a song or you channel it through your music. You know, you 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 you're able to fully release that energy and it doesn't have to hold down, hold you down anymore. You know, what I'm saying it doesn't have so to. So that so that means you've oh. read you read also love, freedom and aloneness. Yeah, that was the book <laughs> that you put me on. The other one, <laughs> the first brother to put me on the Osho. That's funny oh. because how you're speaking, that's exactly what I immediately, like that book just came up to my mind because. That was the book right there. Yeah, that book kind of like, you know, it, anybody, you know, wants hard, to read that book. Swallow. That's a hard pill to swallow, you know what I mean? But, yeah, not a lot of, that's literally a red pill right there. That's a red pill book right there. Because it, 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 it will change whatever you have programs as a kid, it will kind of like, I'm not going to say change you, but it will give you a different pers perspective. You know what it does? It's like when you, when you attempt to stretch, when you go down and you try to do the straddles, you know, the straddle, you're straddling and you can only move a certain amount. 
and you don't and, think you can really move anymore because and you start hurt. feeling that pain and that's you know so then somebody comes and they just push your back down towards your legs and your back your lower back and your muscles are stretching and you're like and it is like breathe relax and then you relax into that stretch and you realize that your muscle is actually like a rubber band you're actually able to stretch yeah. out yeah and 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 ex and it just makes you more flexible you know for that's sure it does knowledge that did for me which leading up to this leading le leading up to this question the fact that you recommend these books and it changed you self improved like it did so many it things it wasn't the books it was it was me living with those books for a while like i'm not saying like like i don't i don't like referencing like mad books and like letting people ah, know okay. i read all these books and just make myself look like I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. an intellectual person just because I read all these books, but I, I I probably lived with a book for like a year and would like literally try to put to practice what the book was and teaching. And you would read it a couple of times, right? It would take me a while to read it. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go on and read it over and over and over because I didn't have to because I would sit with a few pages at a time until I, you know, can actually... That's funny. That's exactly what I do. I, I, I will go through a book in the first chapter. I'll read the first chapter like three times and I will drop the book because I want to take in the information from that first chapter. Right. And let's say three days later, four days later, whenever I pick the book up again, I look, I go to second chapter. That second chapter is going to live with me for a couple of weeks because I'm going to read it again and again. By the time I read that whole book, Somebody could be like, yo, remember chapter four? Oh, man. And I immediately go to it because I read it so many times. And I, I can honestly say I probably have read maybe twice or three times, maybe five, to go 10, back, 15 years later. I read it again, like the power of now. I read yeah. it in 2020 again, and mm -hmm. it was completely different for me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I was like, whoa, I don't remember it was like that. Yeah. So, so that's beautiful. Now, the fact from that question, we're going to go to this one right here. Boom. Mm -hmm. What is something people seem to misunderstand about you? Uh, my passion, like the way I, the way I speak, the way that I, I don't really, it's like a good thing and probably not such a good thing. You know what I'm saying? To say what you think a lot of the times and just, kind but, of, but that could be subjective when it, for other it is. people, it is. it is subjective because it's, it's the people's opinion whether yeah. they misunderstand. But it's not either good or bad. But what do you think, mainly besides your passion? Understand it. I think they understand it that much more clearly, and I think that's what really makes them feel uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? That I they probably think saying. the same thing, but they just don't want to say it, or at least maybe they were pondering or questioning the same thing. And I just kind of had a different point of courage within myself to actually explore something that somebody would think about, but never actually put to practice. You know what I'm saying? So and give I'm me an example. Give me an example of your passion. Yeah. I'm talking about maybe, um, my passion to entertain my passion to, to create art. Like a lot of the stuff I'll put out online, it could come across different ways. You know what I'm saying? It could come across like I'm either I'm overly arrogant or I'm cocky or I'm angry or, you know, Maybe I'm saying some things that, you know, especially in this current day and age where, you know, you just shouldn't say at all because it's going to create some kind of controversy. Yeah, you got to be politically correct, right? Yeah, and, and, and I understand because people are sensitive and people, you know, but at the same time, I feel like it's good to make people feel uncomfortable because it also push, it pushes them to be stronger with the information. You know, there's some information that you got to be strong to hear. You can't just hear it because if you weaken, you hear it, you're going to you're going to it's going to it's going to create an emotion of anger or, or like sadness or whatever inside of you. You got to you got to challenge yourself sometimes to hear things that might make you feel uncomfortable or read things that might make you feel uncomfortable so you can further develop your your you know, like what they call it, your immunity to it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, or, or or your social skills. Or your, or, social or your skills. social skills. Or just being able to relate to more people and learn more languages. It's all different languages to me, the way I see it. You know what I'm saying? So that, I think, is something that people, whether intentionally or unintentionally, they just, they take it however they choose to take it. Instead of sitting down and actually questioning how did he actually mean that? Or why is he expressing something that way? Or, and I think that goes with a lot of different things, right? 
you know, people, they just take something and it's at face value, but they don't question it. Oh, they don't follow. They don't do follow up questions. They just like immediately t- in their own brain. And when they I say may- don't question it, they don't reach out to you and question you and ask you like, hey, man, like I was just curious, like, what were you thinking about when you said when you were speaking about this or, you know, exactly, what you- exactly. What they, they don't they you don't do- have a follow up question. They don't right. They just take it as what they read. And if they felt offended, they leave with that offense. And then when they see you, if you do talk to them and they got kind of like a different vibe, you don't understand why they got that vibe. But then when you dig deep and you start asking the yo man, you are, right? we good. And then they were like, well, you know, you posted this and this is this and that. And yeah, then you personal, like they take it super. super then you're like, which is you didn't I, ask me don't take everything personal, but why you didn't ask me, you should have asked me what you meant. Exactly. Exactly. Like, and then they will understand. I told and you that's why that's why I've always like, you know, I could I could I could give you an example of myself as well, because we both come from the like the same place. We we both New Yorkers and, you know, we, we've been through some shit. We've been through a lot of shit and, and we moved to Florida and then things are a little different. So um, the the passion that we have with things, with words, with with expression, with just certain things, people will be like, whoa. With stuff that we might find funny. Exactly. Somebody else Something might not is funny, funny and people be like, like, you guys are fucking assholes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'll be like, yo, that's fun. Like, really look at it. It's funny. But they never have follow-up questions. They never could come back to you and ask you, like, I know you as a brother, so it's I funny. know exactly. They don't care enough, they don't care enough to inquire. But they care enough to judge in their own oh. way. Oh, yeah. But you, you know what? Yeah, that judgment, they feel that that's questioning you. Think about that. Right. Right. They think that because they read what you wrote online, and when they read it, they feel some type of way. Right. Now, in their brain, they go, damn, man, Josh is going through this, or he's doing that, or he thinks this way. Man, that's not right, bro. And he will leave or she will leave. But then they will never ask you a question because you know, they already made up their mind. They already made up their mind. Right. So for them, that was the follow-up question, which nobody, you should have asked him like, yo, man, I saw a post the other day. Even if it's to be like, you okay, bro? Like, like I don't know, man. You seem kind of like aggressive in that tone or which, how can they hear a tone? When you're writing it, this is the thing. Yeah, this is the thing too. And a lot of people, they know this and they accept it from mainstream artists, right? They accept it from people who they as being popular or somebody who they like their music or they like the way they're acting or the movies they did, right? Wow, bro. They accept the controversy and 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 the entertainment that comes from those vessels, right? As entertainment, they accept it as entertainment because everybody knows that you got to grab people's attention first, right? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you promote like this, like this podcast right here, which I've been looking at the graphics and how you did everything, I'm just taking a second to appreciate it, man, because you put work into this and I really like the layout. I like the way you did the the design and like the way you put the characters on it. That shit's fly, bro. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know that later on, through time, it's gonna start kind of changing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. That's but, but can you break down to the audience what you see? So going back to go going back to as far as what I'm seeing with the with the graphics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you break it down to them because some people probably look yeah, at this like, and it's like little cartoons. You know what I'm saying? The way you the way you put the elements out there. You got the element of DJ of the DJ, which is the music. You know what I mean? Then you got the MC, which is the poet. And the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? And you got the graph, and then you got the B-boy. You got all four four entities, you know what I'm saying? Now, the the hidden fifth element is us. Think about that. That's con- the fifth element. It's consciousness, it's knowledge, it's what we're talking about. The history. That is the fifth element. Because they'll mm-hmm. be like, yo, fifth element. Like, yeah, the fifth element is the knowledge yeah. and the history of each element. Right. So... We're an element. We're the knowledge. We're the we're the vessel. We're not the vessel. We're the passenger in the vessel of what we're doing here. 
Facts. So like you said, we got the B-Boys of Dancing, which we do. Music, you, you're basically a DJ because you're a producer, uh, a graph artist. You got style. You know how to, you know, do some get-ups here and there's some tags. Mm -hmm. You're an MC, which a lot of people don't know you're an MC. Some know, but then some forget because... Because they want to... It's a, it's no, no, not, not that. Incredible <laughs> Josh stands over the yeah, yeah, MC. Yeah, people, yeah. So, yeah, so they're the b-boy they haven't accepted the sun's eye. They haven't accepted that. that there person. you go. There you go. There you go. But little by little, they'll see it. They'll see it. it'll come. It'll come. But we're gonna continue on, and we're gonna move on to another question. And to finish, um, finish that thought. To finish that. Yeah, thought, yeah finish that thought. Finish. Uh, finish it. Yeah, about like the fact that when I post stuff online or when I engage with people, a lot of it comes from a place of entertainment. A lot of it comes from a place of grabbing your attention. And, and just wanting to start a conversation with you. And I would admit that, you know, there's always room to learn. You know what I'm saying? There's always ways that I could approach it better and figure out, you know, more enticing ways to engage with people that are going to ma actually make them maybe have those questions and feel like they can reach out and ask them. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm not as approachable as I assume I am. But those are things that I can develop within within that frame within that framework so a lot of my posts a lot of the things that i share a lot of the things i talk about sometimes i purposely express them in a controversial way because a it's going to grab your attention and b it's a creative way to entertain if you think about it because people as 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 hip-hop vessels right as as hip-hop leaders or hip-hop practitioners right they don't really get into too much of the, uh, the wider range of what's what's going on here in terms of not only our world history, but ancient civilization, ancient culture, um, what's going on now with the community and the movement of hip hop, how its essence, how that fifth element is almost like being drowned out by the monetization of the other entities of the other elements, if you will, as where, like you said, the fifth element stands as the consciousness of our ancestors, of our history, of our culture, which stems back to Africa long before whatever was going on in the Caribbean, before the slaves were brought out here. This is all coming from that energy. That's what hip hop comes from. So when people want to make it all about, you know, just the energy drinks or just the jams or just the money or just the, 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 the this or the that, and they're not really engaging in a conversation that's a little bit more broad. They're kind of like they're cheating these, they're cheating these kids, bro. They're 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 it's like diet, it's like a diet coke as opposed to like Coca-Cola, just being coke. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, breaking is it's it's a it's a generic version of what it of what it really was. Like, like how when we like what we spoke about a minute ago, we actually had little games that we would play within our approach to it we really took on a persona we really took on the character we dressed different we had colors we believed in color you know what i'm saying we believed in concepts and philosophies through it all like we believe like yo if we show too much if we show our whole hand then if we battle this cat they're gonna know what i could do so they have time to practice it and then come back at me and take me out you know what i'm saying this was mm -hmm. this was a part of the deeper realm of thinking about like like we like you said the fifth element of the culture, which is the knowledge aspect, which is we got to do things in secret because the slave master will know and it's going to be harder for us to liberate ourselves. You see what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. parallel. It might, it might not, it might seem trivial in comparison, but those are the mentalities that stem from that sort of energy. So when it comes to the, when it comes to, you know, of course, you're always going to be misunderstood. People are going to misunderstand you. People are not going to know where you're coming from with what, what it is that you're passionate about, why you're doing what you're doing, what you believe in, like what you really believe in, especially for the kids. You know what I'm saying? Like me still feeling like I, I'm so connected with that child within myself. Like I still like and I know people are like, oh, but, you know, you got to be become become a man, grow into like this, this big man and act like this and do that and do, you know fuck all that. Like I still, I'm in tune with, with that child in me. You know what I'm saying? I'm in tune with 
with the b-boy in me you know what i mean so I, I i keep that alive because i feel like the children are the only ones that keep the imagination flourishing they're the only ones that keep the imagination pure you know what i'm saying once you start getting to a certain age you start processing things differently in life, like dull, you know what I mean? The color dims down, you know what I mean? You start thinking about things as if they're factual and you start becoming dogmatic and nothing in this reality is dogmatic, bro. Everything is so interchangeable and always changing and always flowing. And just when you think you got your grasp on what's real, something else comes along and, and shows you how, how, how real it's not, you know what I'm saying? And, and how it's, how there's, there's always going to be a reality within that reality that's deeper, that's more underlying. And I don't want to try to sound too deep or whatever for people listening because it's not it's not about being deep. It's just about having that experience. I could only speak from my own experience as, as, as to what has been shown to me. You know what I'm saying? So those are the things I think that people, like I said, I don't think that they some some people, you know, it's funny because I know the people that do misunderstand certain things genuinely misunderstand certain things. They're the ones that actually do reach out and they're the ones that do inquire. But when it's people that choose to act like they misunderstand, that's when you could tell that they do understand you. They do understand, yeah. but they just don't want to have the conversation because it's not convenient to whatever whatever journey they're setting up to to experience. Yeah, they're, 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 there's no benefit to their agenda respect, or narrative. I respect. I respect how they want to guard their their little bubble. They want to they want to protect their bubble. They don't want nobody penetrating it and bursting it and coming into it and sharing that space with them for whatever reason. Maybe the pain that they feel it hasn't matured to a point where they know that they could just relax and contemplate things outside of what's comfortable to them. They just want to stay talking about the same gods, talking about the same, you know, uh, aspects of the culture, talking about, you know, the same things. And to me, it just gets boring. You know what I'm saying? It just gets to, you get to a point where you, it doesn't stimulate you and it doesn't inspire you anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that's what people misunderstand. That That's an amazing broad answer that whoever doesn't understand you after this. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. And you know what? We can never please everyone. That is the truth about that. We could try, try. We can never, you know, while you giving, while you giving a hug to someone, the other one is getting bothered because you're not hugging them. Like it's crazy. Like it's, it's so now moving on, moving on because there's a lot of more questions and it's all good because all this good, is getting bro. good. This is getting good. How you like it so far though? How you like it? Well, I love you, bro. So I love this shit. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, no, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. But I'm saying, how you like, like, the conversations and the questions? Bro, it's always, it's always, it's always fire, bro. You already know. Okay, dope, dope. So let's move on to that one. Do you believe a person is defined by what he or she does for a living? I think, I think people who uh, need to feel, you know, they need to, they need to feel like they can relate to you on some level or another they're going to definitely define you based off of their own mental construct off of what is familiar to them. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think people out there do define people by what they do for a living, but me personally, I don't necessarily define people um, by what they do for a living. That's just me. I define, I, I, I define, I define myself and I, I, I know how to connect with people. So I'm able to kind of see past, you know, their bank accounts or past their positions their, their, of power or whatever they're doing in their own companies and, and, and for their lives or whatever they're into and just see them for the, the conversation that we're having in that moment. You know what I mean? That's how I prefer to. To engage. So with basically, people. you're not looking at no judgment or you just see oh, yeah, it as I, I am. I am. I, it's, we're always judging, you know, what I'm saying in, in, in every second we're trying to figure out. um. With me, it's a little different though. Like I'm not judging people like as like a good or bad thing necessarily. I'm more so just kind of like judging the energy of what they're giving me in that moment. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if a person is giving you, if a person is open and they ain't got nothing to hide and they don't, they don't have a lot of fear, they're going to be genuine. They're just going to be themselves because they're not, they're not afraid to, they're not scared that you're going to take advantage of them at their most vulnerable point. Like they're just, they're just being them. You know what I mean? And, and that's how I am for the most part. 
unless I know I have to apply the art of war, which is going to be a different type of yeah. Josh, yeah, yeah. you know, from me? definitely, definitely, definitely. You can't be an idiot either. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, can't yeah, of course. Be- you you gotta know kind of how to navigate the maze of truth and the maze of lies. So if you go if you go into a if you go into a specific habitat and you know there's a certain type of animal there, like why are you just gonna go running wild? Like 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 you ain't gonna get eaten. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. You just have to know your habitat. You have to know. You, you premeditate your your movements according to what you see in front of you, whether it's going to be good for you or bad for you. I, 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 at first I, 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 I was trying to find that. So yeah, premeditation is a perfect word to use for that. But now it's not so much of a premeditation no more as it is, it's just a developed instinct that you just, you know, you naturally end up kind of getting the hang of understanding that. You're on autopilot now. Yeah. There's all, that's like, like a certain amount of uh, personalities in the world. You know what I mean? And, and the more, and, and that's why I feel like, the best books to read are people. You know what I'm saying? Talk to people more, because yeah, that, you learn you learn more of of those per- different personality types. And I mean, you know, we've had the privilege of 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 working on a cruise ship through our oh, game. Yeah, that, which... So you know, people from all over the planet, like from every country, and you're living with them. You're not just meeting them. You're living with them, and you're learning the different behavioral patterns and the antics and what they like, what this person likes versus what that country don't like certain hand gestures that this country will take offensive that this country would think is a compliment. So like you just kind of start really learning different languages, different psychological ways to communicate. A luxury, a luxury prison. (laughs) (laughs) Think about that. Mad benefits though, like mad. But think about that. It's a luxury prison, my brother. Like, like once you go downstairs, you're like, oh shit, I know where I'm going. <laughs> but you come up and all these yo, isn't that crazy that the guests they see you and they don't even know like the background of the behind the scenes. So that's kind of like how life is. Like they see you as what they see you. That's it. You will always be like that. And you're right. Like they would define you as somebody who works on the ships because you're there working and on the ship. That's why I went to that question because you could be driving in your nice whip and you go to McDonald's, not that we go to McDonald's, but back then we'll go to McDonald's a bunch of times, but you know, but what I'm saying, like, um, I ain't going to lie. I've been to McDonald's recently. No, they, they fed mad people for cheap. Hey. Yeah. 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 So if you pull in and you see the cashier and then she starts talking or he starts talking and you drive away. And if you think in your brain, Oh, that person is a bum. He working at McDonald's. Some people will feel that way, but some people will be like, Look at this guy. You gotta put you Can in you be- that 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 makes them feel comfortable enough to to. It's to- just to make themselves feel better because if they know that person, they're gonna go, "Oh man, look, Billy working at McDonald's. Can you believe that shit?" I never like- used to like to tell people I'm a break dancer because you tell people like, oh, "I'm a b boy. I'm a break dancer," and it and it's it's they take it in such a demeaning. It's almost like when they project it back to you, they project it in almost this sort of demeaning kind of way. And like, that's why I asked that question because all our lives, and I know you probably experienced that. You just said it right now. You could, you wouldn't want to say to somebody breakdance. In fact, in the past, when I did Carnival Cruise Line and I got hired, I had, yo, I had a fit. Like I literally, you know, the little name tag thing. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I would literally say, I'm no, I don't want that tag. I'm not no breakdancer. And they're looking at me like, what? It's like, can you put? stunt acrobatic dancer and mm-hmm. they're like yeah that's exactly what i am so now when people will read stunt acrobatic dancer it felt better yeah ellie ellie had break dancer yeah so people will be like yo it's you a break this right yeah it's different you a break dancer like it was different like not that they treated him different because you know he's a beautiful person but I, I already knew what I was going into. That's funny. I did the same shit, bro. I made him put Bronx <laughs> Boy on my shit. My shit says Bronx Boy. Yeah, or, or, or if not, I, I had another one that said Entertainer. Yeah, I, I have Entertainer too. Yeah, yeah. Entertainer. Oh, you entertain. What do you do? Okay, now you're asking a lot of questions, so now, now I can answer. I tell people too, like, if you want to define me, define me as an artist before anything else. Like, I would just tell them I'm an artist. They'd be like, dope, oh, dope. paint, whatever. Like, no, nah, I don't paint. I just create. Like, what do you create? Come to the show tonight, you'll see. That's, that's right. It. So as an MC, as a B-boy, as a producer, as like there's so many things that you probably skills that you have. Like, look, you built that shit in the back over there. Like 
Yeah, you know, and the, that shit, how, how long did it take you to build that? What's that called, by the way? Uh, that's a diffuser, sound diffuser. A sound I, diffuser. I, 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 it's one of a kind. Yeah. Nobody got it like that. Because I, I, Bro, I, I, I'm telling you, I saw... I saw you put posting it and creating it, and I was yo, I was I felt like I was watching AGTV <laughs> or some shit. I was like, oh, he put the wood now. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. Yo, I was literally like, yo, I can't <laughs> wait for the finish. It took, it's just, it took me a minute, bro. Like two, three yeah, months. I was like, I can't wait to see the finished product and boom. Like you have all sorts of skills. So, leading to the next question, what are your best resources to know? How to do what you do? What I do? Shit, everything. Yeah. everything. But I'm saying, like, what are the what are the best resources? Like, who who can you go to? Who can you talk to? Where is it? YouTube? Is it a book? Is it like try to try to give me an answer of? Is the best free university on the planet right now, bro? If people are not taking advantage of YouTube right now, I don't know what to say. Yo, straight up Get about the documentaries and all that shit. Yo, get on YouTube and learn how to change your oil, bro. Get on YouTube. Yes, do not be scared of paying the sixteen dollars, seventeen a month for yep, no premium, <laughs> no commercials, and you get Very so cool. many tutorials. Cool. Oh my! And you could go to sleep learning languages. You know what I'm saying? You could put the languages on, and you could turn your phone off, and it's still gonna play with the subscription that you was talking about. You could still play the audio and, and, and turn you know turn the screen off on your phone. There That's you go. There you go. So now, besides YouTube. Because you can actually learn everything from YouTube if you're yep. one of the the this generation is mostly they will go on a computer in in Japan or China and they will look at breakdancing, how to breakdance one oh one. The huh? best way before YouTube, the way I used to do it was I would I would keep my ears to the ground and just try to find people out there that actually was good at the shit. You know what I'm saying? That I wanted to learn how to do. And then I would just, you know, I would try to make a friend. You know what I mean? And then just build with that person and, and try to be around them as much as I can. That, to me, that was really, I mean, I still do that because it's not just YouTube. that I, I'm not too crazy about social media in these days. So a lot of the times I'll just go out there and really try to get real, real world, you know what I'm saying, um, experience. So um, did that lead you? Did that lead you to becoming successful doing Cirque du Soleil, doing the Carnival Cruise Line, traveling with Janet Jackson, um, all sorts of things, music videos, so many artists you've done stuff. Part of the movie B Girl, part of the so other movie. What, what other movies? A step up. So movie. many step up movie. Like you know, like like was did that help you? Did that help you become successful? doing what you were saying to do, like following well, those people. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's dope that you, that, that you're centering in on that because that's something I think a lot of people, I think if you love, if you were passionate about something, you'll find naturally, but for the most part, people that are just wanting to get into certain things, I think sometimes there's, they, they, they misconstrue that and they don't really, they don't really know how to really get, you know, in the mix of those things. And that's the best way to do it, man. Like you just do what you love to do so much that you doing it everywhere because the people that do what you love to do are going to find you. You know what I'm saying? That's so true. Right there, man. Around certain people that they, they might even know someone else that does what you do and they're just going to kind of like how we met. That's ex exactly how it was. It's like how we met. Exactly. I it's was searching for, yeah, I was searching for success. I found it. I found the illest crew to ever exist. Incredible breakers. Like, come Thanks, on bro. now. Like, like yeah. dudes, like people, people probably misunderstand me when I talk like that. And it's because they didn't live my life and they didn't experience what I was going through in the nineties, searching ready to rock, rock steady you, crew. You've seen everybody. Yeah. I was like searching. So then when I went to incredible breakers, Family, Machino, Brian, Eddie, rest in peace, um, Sammy, uh, Flo, everyone, and like your mom, your grandmother, like even your pops, like we had we got history together. So that that's part of my success. That 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 is one of the roots of 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 my life. So I believe that success, success 
with, with, with the resources that we find and friends and, and searching, like you said yourself, you find those people that are really, really good at it, stay by them, and it's going to rub off. You're going to get nasty somehow. Aside from breaking the bank, you know what I'm saying, doing millions in sales or whatever you're doing, of course, that's a different kind of success. Like now, leading to that, what is your definition of success? Nice. Right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> um, bro, like I said, there's different, there's a lot of, there's a lot of them for me. And I, I, that's, a, and that's the thing that, that goes back to one of your earlier questions, which is why sometimes people, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 I'm an expressive motherfucker, bro. I like to go into depth, into detail about what I feel and think about certain things, because I feel like that's really the only way to get to the meat and potatoes of the situation when you actually explore these questions, man, because these are, these are questions that everybody got, you know what I mean? About Life is not simple. Life is not. complex. It's not. And especially if you in tune with life, then you most likely going to be a complex kind of person. So for me, my definition, my definition of success is different things. And at different points of my time of my life, you know what I'm saying? Like right now I have to define success by creating and maintaining a beautiful family. You know what I'm saying? Like that to me is successful. Like you could, you could, you could do the fam thing, but, but go out there and, and be gone half the time, focusing on your bag, making money. But that means you're only successful with that because when you come back home, you start dealing with problems with your kid. You start dealing with problems that now it's like, yo, you, whatever you, whatever you put an energy into, you're going to get good at that. You're going to, you're going to master that. You know what I'm saying? And that's taking energy out of everything else. That's taking energy away from everything else. So whatever you put in that energy into, that's going to be what you're going to be successful at. You know what I'm saying? For me right now, my success is defined by the amount of energy I'm putting into nurturing my son. So that to me is success. Beautiful. I don't, I don't think success is measured by how much, how much money you got or how popular you are to people, how much they praising you and all that shit. I think success is based off of what you're leaving behind, you know what I'm saying? Or what you're bringing into the world, because those are the only things that's really going to last. It's going to pass the test of time because you're passing. Now you, you're, you're almost like you're reincarnate in another life form. You, your lineage continues. So if you can't put a piece of yourself into that lineage, somebody else is going to do it. So unless that child is conscious and unless they can create themselves, they're going to have to depend on television or, 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 or popular culture to raise them. And we all see what that's doing right now. You know what I'm saying? We all see how confused people are. How sensitive which, leads, which leads to this question. What advice would you give someone wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? The first piece of advice I would give is to not even consider it as a career. Like, don't even look at it like it's a career. Like, look okay. at it, it is. Look at it as something that you really enjoy doing. Like, look at it as something that, that you're able to channel whatever other energies you got going on into that thing that is, is actually making you excited to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's something about it that you can't stop thinking about it. Like feed that. Don't run from it. Don't listen to other people who try to stop, who try to stop you from feeding it or try to make you focus on what they want you to focus on. Focus on the shit you really want to focus on. You know what I'm saying? And know that it's okay to do that. Even if you're in the middle of school, you're in the middle of college, you're in the middle of this career that's paying you six, seven figures or whatever it is, but you got another dream and that's not aligning with the dream you got. And you want to go into it? Don't be scared, bro. Go into it. Go into it all the way. Quit your job, whatever it is, whatever, whatever. There's no rules to this shit. If you got the courage to do it and you know you're going to really, really pursue it and you're going to do it every day and you're going to go and you're going to go to places where other people are doing that and you can share and build and exchange ideas and information, do that, bro, because that's going to feed your soul. That's going to be your balance. You know what I'm saying? The job and 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 whatever else society is telling you is the actual process to become successful, whatever they define as success, which is, which is an aspect, which is an aspect of success. And that's fine in and of itself, but there's certain things you could revisit. 
You know what I'm saying? There's certain things you can revisit and, and, and you can always develop later on down the line. The real question is, what are you prioritizing? You know what I mean? How do you want to prioritize what it is that you're doing? How do you want to organize yourself? You know, it inevitably will become a career if, if you get that good at it. But I don't think you should focus on it as a career because initially, when the, whenever you start anything, you're not going to be like you're, you're you're not you're not going to be like the best in the world at it. Like there's going to be other people that have been doing it. They've already put tens of thousands of hours into it, so they're gonna obviously they're gonna do it in a different fashion and have a different capacity to be able to execute it a little bit more efficient or understand it a little bit better than you because you're just learning it. And that's why I say don't think of it as a career and don't look at it as something that you need to be competing against other people about. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like comp the, the mentality of competition, it kills inspiration. It kills what initially drives you to really want to get that into something. Because then you, you, you at the surface of it, right? You might be just getting into something, whether it be painting, whether it be singing, whatever. And then you start seeing people's reactions to what it is you're putting out, what it is you're doing. And then you compare their reaction to you versus how they react to somebody who's popular that's doing it, to somebody who might already have a name. And then you're like, damn, like they they gave me some eye feedback, you know what I'm saying? But they're not giving me feedback the way that they they given that artist feedback. You know what I mean? Or that 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 singer or that rapper or whoever and they got they got ex they got basically an emotional connection to those people because those people have been doing a little bit longer they've put out more content they've put out more music they've put out you know they've done more competitions they've danced more or whatever the case may be and that's okay that's not that's not a reason for you not to keep doing what you love doing or what is exciting you you know what i'm saying you 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 got to protect that and 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 that's that takes conscious effort and you got to protect it for the first few years. You got to protect that excitement. And I would say, you know, when you're developing that, don't do it around too many people who are immature. Don't do it around too many people who are going to, you know, who are not going to help you cultivate and, and help you really feel that much more excited about doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like whenever we was around Richie, like you said earlier, like he, he hyped you up. He made you feel excited about what you were doing because he was like, yo, you're good, bro. You're dope. You should come to our practice. And it's inviting. It's the energy's open. It's receptive. Dude, immediately. It, it, it right? gave me, it gave me a boost of, of right. morale, a boost of to... inspiration that I was like, wow, somebody actually thinks I'm good at this. Exactly. I, and I want to be part of I'm you guys. Cool. Right. And it makes you inspired to keep doing it. Right. As opposed to your crew members, which they're nowhere to be found now. Right. Half of them are, you know, no, they didn't. were judging. They were like, um, I do whack you know? because they're doing it from a different place. But what they're really doing is they're doing it to themselves because that's how they judge themselves. If they looking at your talent or they looking at your craft or whatever you're creating, if they look in, if somebody's looking at you that way, it's really because that's their approach to how they do whatever it is they do. It doesn't have to be your approach. You know what I mean? So whenever you're pursuing something, you know, words are just words. You can say career, you can say whatever, that's fine. But ultimately it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an inspiring movement. It's an inspiring act. You know what I'm saying? It's an inspiring piece of music. It's something that you, that you excited to do. It's like something moves you and you're like, yo, you know what? I want to do this. I want to sing. I want to write some lyrics or I want to, I want to dance or I want to work out or I want to, Whatever. And if you feel it in that second, in that moment, put your energy into it and do it. You know what I'm saying? And just do it and be in the moment with it. And eventually you'll have the opportunity to make it a career. You'll have the opportunity. And then if you choose to make it a career, then there's obviously there's elements and things you need to learn to be professional and to get yourself out as a brand. And, you know, that goes with pictures. You get your photos taken, you get your demo, you film your work. Or you 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 basically you document it, you know what I'm saying, and you do it in a way that's presentable, and you able to share it with people, and you show people, look what I did, look what I'm into, look what I'm creating, look what I, you know, this is my this is my craft, this is my art, this is what I like to do, and and the more you keep doing it, the more it's gonna be, the more marketable it'll, the more marketable it will become, the more people will want to pay to see what you have to offer, or or to watch you dance, or to 
listen to your music. You know what I'm saying? The more you do it, the more you put it out there, the more you get around people. So that, as far as it being a career, that's probably more of a, a on a professional. I call that a profession. I don't, I don't call what I do a, a career because careers, in my opinion, like they're always interchangeable and they have a beginning and they have an end. You know what I mean? Like, I like to look at what I do as profession, as a profession, because you just approach your life that way. You know what I'm saying? Your life is your profession. You know what I mean? That's Keep beautiful, like that. beautiful answer. Beautiful answer. Now, <clears throat> another question. In the current state of hip hop culture, what is something you would like to change? Honestly, nothing. I would nothing like, at all. Nothing. Nothing. Because we're all we're all already doing so many different things that are creating so many different points of change that it change happens, you know what I'm saying? It, it's just gonna happen. It doesn't matter. That's that's the only thing that you're never gonna be able to to actually make happen or not happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like changes. No, I feel you. It, so it's like Google that is an AI becoming a sentient. That it has slowly, a life. Slowly, but surely is changing and being created. It's either going up, down, left, right, or whatever it is. And it's something that is just going to happen whether you like it or not. So there's nothing there, to there, change. There, 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 the hip hop culture has never changed really. It, it 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 only appears to change at the surface of it, but if you go to the core of it, it's still the same. Like you still, you still gonna have the essence that you can't kill. You can't kill essence. You know what I'm saying? Like the essence of it, because it because it was something that was that was generated from. <clears throat> excuse me, because it was something that was generated from that lineage. Ancestors, African culture, Tainos, like natives, you know what I'm saying? People who are oppressed, people who who were put into these situations of 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 basically nothing, bro. And 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 they took something and and they were able to literally change the world culture just with the little things they had access to, like you know what I'm saying, the light, the light post, the lamp post in the street, you know what I'm saying, or some turntables from your grandma or you know, your body, you know what I mean, or some spray cans, or you know. They just took something and created such a beast of an expression out of it that it mm -hmm. changed the face of reality for everybody, not only in America, not only in New York, but all over the world. In L.A., it, it, it influenced L.A. culture. It, it influenced everything. You know what I'm saying? So even the way even the way people dress, you know what I'm saying, with the brim hats and their sneakers and their jeans and the, you know, at the at the surface. Yeah, it's it, there's there's other changes that can probably make the commercial acts that the commercial aspects of it that much more um integral you know what i'm saying but the depth of it is 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 forever unchanged you know what i'm saying that's amazing amazing all right ladies and gentlemen the show has to come to an end due to some technical difficulties but we're gonna do part two very soon um me and my brother incredible josh we have so much history so many stories so many battles so many tours so many things but I'm glad you guys stuck around all the way to the end. Um, like I said, we're going to have a part two. I go by the name of Flashback. That was my brother, Josh. Incredible Josh. Thank you very much. This is Flash Talks. History worth listening to. Peace.